What is up, y'all? Rebel of the New here again. Lance Curry here again. It's been a long time coming. Several months, in fact. <laughs> but I think that I should get back into this Mami Tomoe shit because it's been several months, in fact. <laughs> I've just been caught up with so much other stuff. Not <laughs> including my videos that I've just gotten off topic. I've gotten off task and very behind schedule. I was... I actually, honestly, I knew this was going to take a long time once I started this because the different story, like I said, is my favorite manga and it is a manga that you cannot just sit down and analyze. Unless you have several hours to spare, you can't just sit down and analyze it in depth. You know, not if we're talking about a real analysis, not those piece of shit, 15 minute garbage ass bootleg for the monetization, monetize, 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 monetization, whatever the fuck YouTube calls that shit. Those, those shitty analyses. Doing a real analysis of this manga, this, this story is so difficult because you have to look at it page by page by page, pretty much. I mean, I'm not putting the whole shit up there. <laughs> that just get, that's copyright haven right there. But I'm still swamped with other work and I've planned out how much I'm going to be doing right now because honestly, like seriously, I, I'm, I'm right behind. I got to see my old stuff and get back to updating that. I got to get back to updating the mommy stuff. I got to get back to updating the Final Fantasy stuff. I still got this old ass video on the, the um, FF7, what you call that shit, the Forgotten City that I still need to do. And the longer I put this off, no matter how much work I have to do in the meantime, <laughs> the more likely I'm just gonna eventually get bored and not try to do it anymore. But I really do love this manga, and this is a very well-developed character. Again, Mami is an extremely well-written character, and she's one of the best-written characters in fiction, in my opinion. Well-written being not just, I like how she's written, but well-written being, she has a lot of depth to her. That's what I consider well-written. Because, of course, just how much you like a character, that's fucking opinions, man. It's your opinion, dude. So anyway, without further ado, let me get into this shit. Now, it's kind of funny because I ended the last video talking about, and I did see a bit of the last video to sort of gauge where I'm supposed to start right now, but I was talking about, damn, this is such a fucking good manga, man. Then I've heard it off for several months. <laughs> but, but I'm back in business, back in business. No more of the old shit, right? Rebel of the new here. We're going to go straight into it. And I was at this part where I was talking about, matter of fact, I, I can pull it up right here in the meantime, but I was talking about how mommy is a very selfish character. I, I think that's what I was talking about. But anyway, that's what I'm talking about right now. She's a very selfish character. She's not what she seems on the surface. She helps out magical girls, in short, for her own devices. What mommy wants is two things. One, she wants to feel less guilty about the terrible things she did in choosing to save her own life instead of her parents' lives. Which you can get into that later, and I will later. But it's... That's how she feels, okay? I'm not going to talk about how I feel about it right yet. But two, I probably already did, but two, she wants company. Because now she feels it is, to, to get rid of this guilt, she feels it is her sworn duty, not to get rid of it, but just to manage it, to deal with it. It is her sworn duty to defend her city, her area, right? At as many places in that area as she can, whereby all these riches that are attacking, she's going to, and the familiars, even the, the lesser forms of riches, she's going to, she's going to sacrifice herself, her own safety, over and over and over again to make up for the selfish risk she made where her family died and she survived that split second risk i think you can see why i lie on it just by saying split second risk but that's beside the point right now but she does not want to do this fight all alone she wants people with her she wants well she can do it all alone but she would prefer to have some sort of company so every time she helps out a magical girl whether they are in her territory or not but she usually sticks to her own territory otherwise she's trying to help out somebody else as a passerby she is doing this to present herself as someone who is amiable and reliable. Reliable is spe specifically in terms of combat, someone who is useful to others. That's what she wants to present herself as. She's not trying to help people for the, out of the goodness of her own heart. At least not... <laughs> Any fucking time I do the heart motion, it's seeming like it's some other shit. <laughs> it's like it's flipped on the, the screen and I don't know. But out of the goodness of her own heart, no. At least not entirely. Because she really wants company it's very simple it's very selfish there's a little bit more to it than that but the crux of the matter is she is she's 
I don't want to say selfish as if it's a bad thing, but really, she she could really give a damn about how <laughs> she could give a damn about how anybody is faring in terms of their magical girl fights and their safety, aside from whether or not they can help her with her problems, her loneliness. And this really does just amount to selfishness. I don't want to say it's a bad thing, but this is her main concern. And so anytime she helps anybody else beside that, anything that they benefit from, the other person, having their lives saved and all that, that's just a bonus to mommy. That's just a... This fucking lint. Okay, you know what? I'm, I'm about to just take this shit on to the fucking video. Oh, I gotta go ahead and sum up the scene, right? The scene. Kyoko was just joining mommy because... Mommy invited her Kyoko for tea after saving Kyoko's life. And now Kyoko Sakura, right? The redhead girl. She's like, Woo, wee. I'm really indulging myself, aren't I? And Mommy's like, no, it's okay. Obviously, right? <laughs> mommy, mommy knows what she's doing. She knows exactly what she's doing. And she's embarrassing Kyoko, as a matter of fact. Because she's so... She's so nice. She is so generous. And formal polite everything everything possible that a a friend could run in another friend unless you want them thug motherfuckers that's, that want a homie that's down but she's also down though so she is everything that kyoko could run and she's treating kyoko in her own house in mommy's own house she's treating kyoko to food that she's made for kyoko and, and tea that she's made for kyoko and this is after having saved kyoko's life and re having replenished kyoko's soul gem which they, of course, don't know what this means yet with the soul gems. And if they get completely blackened out, then you, you die. But, <laughs> but it's, it's, not, it's not the point. Kyoko knows that she needs her soul gem to continue fighting. And it's not a good thing if her soul gem is depleted like that. As it is when she fights normally. So Mommy has basically helped Kyoko out in every way imaginable. But in terms of this scenario right here, having just fought that witch. She's done everything for Kyoko but fucking suck Kyoko off and now Kyoko is very abashed she's completely embarrassed because she's just so flattered by how well mommy is treating her and mommy again is doing this on purpose so of course Kyoko starts talking all this nice shit about mommy mommy you're so amazing you're so cool your strategies are so much better than mine you, you know so much you're so you're so generous and all this stuff. You're so welcoming and, and your heart's so warm. I, I love you. Well, not not literally, but she says all this and she's like, I, I just can't believe you're, you're so close. And that segue, like physically so close to I am, you're just one town array. That segues what she says, that one town array thing into, uh, what, what is exactly what she said? She says, uh, and meanwhile, mommy is just sipping tea like, she's like, wow, I'm surprised this is actually working. <laughs> but then she's like, uh, I have a request. I, I know it might, might sound audacious. It might sound a bit too bold, but... And Kyoko gets up. She's sort of nervous. She puts her, her hands on the table and she poses herself up. And she trails off. She's almost sweating. She's blushing. And mommy is just like, <laughs> with the fucking tea. <laughs> She's like, oh, so it's finally happening. <laughs> After all these months, I'm finally getting, and, uh, and months doesn't really sound like much, but mom, we got to remember, <laughs> if you don't have it in mind already, this is mommy Tomo right here. Most magical girls, even might probably like a fucking once a week or twice, maybe, maybe even three times a week, maybe even four times a week. Mommy is fighting several times every day. Several times. Basically, every time a familiar or a rich shows up, Mommy is fighting. <laughs> mommy cannot let it rest. She has to fight. And her guilt is going to get even worse if she doesn't fight. I I've already said this before. I know I have. But her grief seed, uh, not her grief seed, um, her soul gen, is in a very unique state. It's in a state where she's like half and half almost. And I'm not saying that it's it's always going to be half empty and half full I guess you could say half blacked out but it's in a state where it's more or less 50% full and 50% empty and the only reason mommy is still alive she's not a rich because of this insurmountable guilt the only reason is because she's constantly sustaining herself by fighting these riches 
and that creates a negative feedback loop in the environment and in herself because it's it's like a as a uh, lisa lopez would say like a sweet bitterness it's something where she has to keep going on and it feels good it soothes her just a bit doesn't completely relieve her symptoms of guilt doesn't completely relieve the guilt but it assuages her guilt just enough for her to keep going and in that guilt is something that is keeping her going on because without that guilt she would be dead i mean without that uh that guilt leading to her fighting the riches she would be dead and at the same time the more she fights the riches the more she's fighting alone the guiltier she becomes and the more she has to stay in a situation where she's the only one who's alive because of her wish so she's she's using that wish that she used to sacrifice her parents indirectly and she's using it for she's using it for a noble end so you have a a bit of a duality here it's almost like a paradox rather than a, just a duality it's a paradox it's a contradicting duality because you have the goodness in her attacking these riches and these familiars and fighting for them and then you have the the negative aspect of the fact that she's having to do this in the first place but you need to have both at this point because without both you die this is mommy right here there's more to it than that, but this gonna, is going to come up when I go into this story a little bit more. But so right now, Mommy's just, what she wants right now is just somebody to be with. This is all she wants, is somebody to be with in her crusade, th this endless crusade against these riches. Because she doesn't know when she's going to die. So just for as long as possible, this is what's going to happen. They're going to fight. This is what Mommy wants, for the two of them to fight together. But now we're going to go into this shit right now, because I'm, I'm done stalling. So what I said is... And I'm sorry, but I got the car top back in my mouth. Oh, well, peppermint. Happy holidays. But at the point where it's working, she, mommy, begins to realize this. She begins to realize that it's working. And she erates Kyoko just like this. She erates Kyoko sipping the fucking tea. She's such a badass, man. <laughs> Running her cup. I mean, it's, it's kind of pathetic, but at the same time, it's, it's real badass how she's playing Kyoko like this. And it's, it's very surprising. It really shows how shitty people are. And how she could end up being so cynical that she's she's flattering everybody the same way, or she's trying to. At the very least, she's saving their lives. And then she ends up just being put off by all of them. Kyoko was the first person who was actually any different. And she's been doing this over and over and over and over and over again. It's really surprising. But yeah, the different story takes on a new meaning when we reread, because... You don't see this at first, but you see at first, at least what I saw at first, is that Kyoko is just saying all this nice stuff to Mommy, and Mommy's like, what? what? And she's just surprised that Kyoko appreciates it. But there's no element of Mommy is wanting Kyoko to appreciate it, that I, that I saw at least, and wanting Kyoko in particular to join her. <laughs> oh, man. And then what we get now, would you... Let me be your apprentice? But now mommy is shocked. You see how mommy is shocked? This? Well, let's see what I say. Though she didn't expect the apprentice request, so her shock helps mask her initial intentions from the reader. Beautiful writing there. Beautiful writing. Because what you expect is for mommy to be surprised. Because what? I didn't, I didn't know that you wanted to be my apprentice, but it doesn't matter because mommy, sure, mommy didn't expect Kyoko to want to be her apprentice. And as a matter of fact, she doesn't really want this formality thing going on anyway. And I'm going to say this a bit later on too, but by that same token, mommy still wanted Kyoko to be with her regardless. Mommy still wanted Kyoko to join her. Mommy still didn't want to be alone. So she doesn't really care all that much. Is they're gonna be? It's more like a, like a just namesake type of thing, student and apprentice. Really, mommy's teaching Kyoko like a friend. That's how she's gonna end up doing it. It's not gonna be so stiff as uh, it's not student and apprentice, a teacher and apprentice. But at the same time, what we see here, we don't see any of what mommy wants. That doesn't get revealed until Ray later on, when mommy says it. <laughs> And Gilgo doesn't get it until mommy says it. But what we see at this point, because we're not in mommy's thoughts, all we see is that mommy is shocked. That we see that mommy wants nothing. 
but just to be nice. She just likes being nice. She just likes having company over. And then Kyoko goes on this, this tangent of flattering mommy. And the earnest flattery, but she's flattering mommy. And mommy's like, wow, she's really nice. I didn't know she really, I didn't know she really thought of that. Because what we see from before that, I'm very happy to have tea with another magical girl. That's all mommy cares about from what we see. <laughs> really, mommy wants more than that. She's not just going to have tea with a magical girl. She wants more than that, okay? <laughs> but really, I'm glad I got to meet you today, mommy-san. Mommy's like, wait a second. And then Kyoko goes on and on and on. I was so reckless in battle. Where was you? Analyzed and took notes on all the riches you fought in there. This experiment of magic, you're mentally prepared for battle. I learned a lot of the stuff about what we talked about over tea. And and you're strong and reliable in battles. And you're just a town away. And mommy's like, true. <laughs> but it's more like, like she's surprised that it's actually working. This is what she wants. She wants Kyoko to feel this way. She wants Kyoko to admire her. That's how selfish mommy is. It's how selfish and deprived of company that mommy is oh because she wants this she wants this because she has never had this before ever since becoming a, ma a magical girl of course she's never had this sort of company before because her actual friends oh tight ass del so her actual friends i guess you could say they're becoming more like acquaintances but once a friend always a friend i guess in the school the guys, the girls, rather, who aren't magical girls, they can't relate to mommy. And mommy can't relate to them, really. And it's just, it's just, again, namesake. It's just, they're there. But this, what's going on right now? I shouldn't say they're there, but really, mommy's, mommy's selfishness, her desire, like seriously, her desire to overcome this guilt and to, well, to deal with this guilt, first things first, is so strong that she doesn't even have time to talk to those guys anymore. Like she's always gone. And when she's in school, she's very, she's very, like, her personality is, is real, it's not sad, but she's not looking anywhere, looking anywhere near as happy as she normally would. Now, my gigabytes are starting to run out, so let's go on. This is, this is mommy here, right? This is the mommy that's behind the mask. I'm just having to break it down before we actually see it. Mommy was, was expecting something. She just wasn't expecting this. This is why she's so surprised. And because of her surprise, perfect writing. Because we don't even expect the possibility that Mommy wanted this now. That Mommy wanted Kyoko to be with her now. Because she looks shocked. It's not for that reason, but she still looks shocked. So it doesn't matter. To us, you can't tell the difference. Yet. The next day. Ah, uh, just exactly what I was saying. So we got a badass looking friend who looks like a, a cooler version of Sayaka. <laughs> Sayaka Mickey, of course. You know, Tomure-san, you've been really cheerful today. Did something good happen to you? Episode 2, Chapter 2. You were smiling all through class, too. Was I? So, did you get a boyfriend? Eh? Now this really tells something. Well, let's see what I can say. Pretty much states that Mommy, while very polite, is usually not cheerful in public. She's actually in a state of repressed depression. She's holding it back. She's holding back exactly how she feels, which is an enormous amount of guilt. And she's basically like a, a she's a zombie. She's a zombie with ideals. She's doing exactly what she can and nothing more to keep living. I'm not even exaggerating here. As soon as she gives up her ideals, she becomes rich. As soon as she gives up her ideals, she becomes a rich, and her ideals are pretty much hopeless. They're pretty much hopeless. And the, and the sad thing is, one, she, she's not going to run out of riches. Two, so she's going to buy forever. And <laughs> people are not going to end up being saved completely, and then she can just, she can sit back and be happy at what she's accomplished. That's not going to happen. Two, that's just window dressing. All that stuff she's saying about fighting riches, it's an excuse. It's an excuse, because she's so... Filled with grief over what she's done, she has to latch on to something. Something. Some kind of ideal 
to help her feel a little bit better in spite of the terrible wish she made that got her parents killed, or rather that let her parents die. And so mommy, you see mommy's face. She's, she's, it's just mommy. She's just, she's there. She's not, she's not, she's just, she's just there. No real emotion, just existing. And in the meantime, she puts up that robotic facade of politeness, formality, of elegance around everybody. And I'm not saying she doesn't get mad or anything like that. I mean, she does have emotions, but this is her neutral self. Her neutral self isn't... And I'm not saying she has to be a Genki girl. She has to be a Genki. I'm not saying she has to be emo. I'm saying what she is is out of this world. She is not focused on anything but her, her mission. That's all she's focused on. I've, I've talked this topic to death. It's the only thing keeping her going on. Her worst fear is to give people a reason to not like her. So she puts on a perpetual front. I didn't even know I added that. This is, this is true, but it's not like Sayaka true. It's not, it's not Sayaka true. It's, it's not Sayaka true. The difference between the Sayaka true and the Mami Tomoe true is Mami Tomoe is only putting this, mag this act on for magical girls. She doesn't really give a shit about what anybody else thinks. I mean, she would prefer that people like her. But she, it's really, she wants the company of someone who can relate to her and what she's going through right now. Having to fight the riches and all this. So it's not really like someone like friend number one. She doesn't really care as much about what friend number one thinks about her personally it's more so someone like Kyoko who she would be trying to please trying to get their admiration from but then right before I go down in that case why does she act so polite to everybody well one it's a perpetual front so she's she's always acting this way two if she shows exactly how she feels as she says later on she really start to feel that way she'll feel hopeless she'll feel hopeless and then it'll been it'll it'll been for nothing. That that's not what she wants at all. She wants to repress it as long as she can the guilt she feels, whether it's by fighting riches or by acting a certain way around others. Now we don't know exactly how mommy acted before. At least I don't think we know how mommy acted before the accident, where her parents died and she almost died. All we know is that how she acts afterwards. Is not how she would have naturally acted before. This is all makeup. I guess our relationship is a bit different from just friendship. I guess you could say that if we don't trust one another as more than just friends, our friendship won't hold up. We've just met, and I'm not sure if we'll end up there, but it'd be splendid if we could become so close that we could trust one another with our lives. And then they look all weird out and she's like, what? And, and, <laughs> and the reason for this is she's completely out of touch. Again, she's, she, she is out of this world. She is not dealing with anything that these people are dealing with. These normal people are dealing with. She is, she is in her, her facade. She's in her facade, and she wants to bring someone else in that facade with her. Then she can be happy in her facade. She can be happy pretending to be happy while she's fighting riches forever. But until then, she's going to be struggling trying to fight those riches forever. It's not going to really change her modus operandi. It's just going to make her less happy while she's doing so. So again, she's on the brink. She's on the brink of becoming a rich. This is just a little bit of, of soothing. The one, the one bit of salvation she could use... To help her to go on her crusade, her eternal crusade of pain and sorrow and grief and guilt without, like, it's, it's hard to explain. She's pretty much already lost, but it'll be the one thing to help her to feel as though she's not lost. The one thing to help her feel a bit satisfied, even though she's already lost everything near and dear to her. I don't know where her, her extended family is, but we don't see it. 
and she's living by herself. So I'm guessing there isn't one. She is living by herself under the nose of the law, and she is just completely, completely surrounded with stuff that she cannot relate to. And it makes her feel even worse because the only reason she is living in this state of absence is because she put herself in it. And she knows this. She knows that everything that's going on around her that she can no longer relate to. These friends that she's had, is all this stuff. All the, all the, the, every, the world. The world outside of fighting riches. It is only because she put herself in that situation. She resigned herself to a, a world of having to fight riches and that's it. In exchange for her parents' lives. That's what she thinks. And so she just says, well, if this is what I have to do from now on. Can I at least have someone to be with me in it? That's all I'm asking for. Now what she's saying, this is the type of close friend mommy aims to have. Aims to have. But she initially doesn't trust Kyoko to trust her enough to be on this level. Willing to sacrifice herself for mommy. Mommy has faith in her ability to befriend these people to the extent that she wants them to befriend her with their lives but she is she's seen some stuff in people particularly in magical girls because this is what relates to her now and none of it has been positive it has all been negative so she has no real reason to believe that even though Kyoko's indulging in everything mommy's giving her right now that Kyoko will end up when the time comes, when the cards are laid out on the table, that Kyoko will still stand by mommy's side with her life. Probably not going to happen, is what mommy's thinking. She, it, it, mommy's basically fantasizing. Again, she's in her own world. She's in her own world. I have to do this. These are my ideals. If someone could do this with me, if someone could stay with me forever, I would just feel all right. I wouldn't be in as much pain still hurt but I wouldn't be in as much pain but is there someone who would really be out there willing to give what mommy is giving willing to give it back to mommy mommy herself knows that's doubtful even though Kyoko seems like a nice girl mommy is not on a nice path she's not on a nice path at all I see you as a perfect magical girl in every way, so if it isn't too much of a bother for you, you won't? And then mommy looks a little bit sullen. She looks a little bit sad. So this is a flashback from that night when Kyoko asked mommy to become her sensei. And let's go on and see what happens. Um, I don't know if this is the same as an apprentice. But I've always thought about how nice it'd be to have a magical girl as a friend. So then, indeed. Mommy says, indeed. Well, let's look at the notes here. Apprenticing, 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 blah, blah. apprenticing was never on Mommy's mind. But she will leave Kyoko regardless. However, feeling that and treating Kyoko more of a close friend than a more formal, less intimate student. Kyoko and Mommy are on two different pages right here. Mommy knows this. What Mommy wants is for Kyoko to be her friend. Period. Point blank. She does not care if Kyoko is stumbling on her own two feet and always getting her and Mommy nearly killed at every encounter. She doesn't care if Kyoko is so bad with her weapon that every time she tries to use it, she almost always takes off Mommy's head. <laughs> she does not care if Kyoko cooks like a like a man she what she wants is for kyoko to be receptive that's it she just wants kyoko to be receptive she wants kyoko to feel the same way mommy feels the same way she feels she wants kyoko to feel re receptive to her feelings now how can kyoko know what this what this means well, let's put it this way, okay? Okay, let's put it this way. Mommy has just given Kyoko... Cake? Tea? 
place to spend the evening, uh, fighting advice, rich hunting advice, rich tracking advice. And the difference between rich hunting and rich tracking is rich tracking is trying to find the rich. Rich hunting is actually going out and attacking the rich and all that stuff. Neutralizing the rich. Same for familiars. Etc. 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 Mommy has d and saved her life. <laughs> Can't forget that one. This is what mommy means by reciprocate. What mommy wants is for Kyoko to treat her the same way. Be as maybe not. I don't mean like baker food and shit. I mean be as kind and generous and thoughtful and want to spend time with her and want to hang out with her. This is a fucking tea party, okay? It's a fucking tea party. She wants Kyoko to just be cool with her. That's it. Just be as, as, as thoughtful. But Kyoko just wants more. Kyoko just wants, wow, you know so much. Teach me more. You, you're so awesome, sensei. Please be my sensei. You're, you're so amazing. I, I really want you to tell me everything you know. And mommy doesn't want... I mean, mommy doesn't mind it, but it's not what she wants. Because this, is, this immediately establishes a barrier between the two of them. Now, instead of having two friends, you have the teacher on the high level and you got the student on the bottom. Mommy knows this. Kyoko knows this, but she doesn't know what mommy wants. And so mommy says, she says, I thought about how nice it'd be to have a magical girl as a friend. I really have. And Kyoko is still concerned about the teaching her part. The will you teach me part. So then, will you accept to teach me? Will you be my sensei? Will you tell me everything you know? Mommy, it's like, okay, yeah, I'll do it. She's going to make it work. She's happy that Kyoko is is so is so inspired by her but at the same time it's not it's not what she really wanted but that's fine because it means to her that Kyoko really cares next thanks for treating me again today you're welcome take care Sakura-san will you be coming to Mitakihara again you're welcome any time. I didn't get in your way today? On the contrary, you really helped. I was really able to rely on you as we fought today. Oh? Then, sure. I'll be looking forward to working with you. Now, this is the one grievance I have with this. Like, this is the only real grievance I have with this entire shit. It's not a shit, I'm sorry. Th this story, okay? This is, this is the only grievance I have. And that grievance is that it does flashbacks without pointing out at all that it's going in the flashbacks. And it also doesn't make it any bit inferable that you're going into these flashbacks. Instead it just goes in and out of them. At will. With no context at all. Okay, well it has context, but it doesn't have any indication that you're going in and out of these flashbacks. This, this is another flashback, but it is after when Kyoko first supposed that they be teacher and student. When she asked, rather. I don't know if it's the second day after or what, but it's, it's another day. And it's before Mommy goes and, and talks with her friends, her friend, yeah, two of them, her friends about, oh, we can trust each other all lives, it'd be so great, we can have our, our, whatever, she says, her fantasizing. But she talks to her regular friends about that. So you don't know this. <laughs> it doesn't, doesn't say flashback, it doesn't anything. And I know it's kind of uncouth to just say flashback and whatever. But it's, there is no indication that this is a flashback. So the story still rolls pretty smoothly without it. But it would be much stronger if it would indicate some way that we're going into these flashbacks here. Like it does right now. This is only their first meeting. And, and no, this is not their first meeting. So it confused me too. I should have put this as a correction, but whatever. But Mommy asked Kyoko if she'll come back. This seems fully positive. But Kyoko's inferiority complex is already beginning to show. She expects Mommy to not want her actually fighting alongside her in Mitakihara. 
But you can see this is right here. I didn't get in your ray today. Rimani asks, will you be coming to Matakihara again? You're welcome anytime. So Kyoko, and then she's like, I was really able to rely on you as we fought today. So Mommy says, and then Kyoko's like, oh, really? Oh, shucks. Oh, in that case. <laughs> Instead, what's going on is Mommy's going into Kyoko's territory to help Kyoko out. Because Kyoko was like, well, I would just hold Mommy back if I actually stayed in Matakihara and fought. So why would I do that? But I'm not good enough to, to actually be in Mommy's territory. She's just teaching me in my own. This this sets the tone for a lot of... And it's, it's very hard to tell that this is what is going to end up being the tragedy of Kyoko's character. But this sets the tone for it in hindsight. It really sets the tone for it. Her inferiority complex. And it's partly Mommy's own undoing because... I see. Because Mommy is the one doing this by acting so perfect. She's not trying to overly intimidate these would-be Kohai you know, students and actual Kohai like Kyoko. These random magical girls who are like, wow, you don't need any help. You're so good. But the flaw of her plan is that she's just so damn good at everything she does, whether it's fighting, whether it's anything else she puts on an act for, trying to be good, studying, her posture, her, 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 how clean her place is, everything, her, her cooking. She's so damn good that anybody, anybody who's around her feels inadequate. And if they don't have high self-esteem or adequate self-esteem, in Kyoko's case even, then otherwise they'll, they'll end up being how we end up seeing Kyoko become. Now, I'm pretty sure I already said how Kyoko became, but spoiler alert... Which I should have put this at the start of the video. Spoiler alert. <laughs> you know it's part fucking three. Fuck it. At this point, just expect spoilers, okay? Kyoko betrays Mommy because she feels that being around Mommy is holding Mommy back. And she loses confidence in herself. So she no longer wants to be with Mommy. Because her way of fighting, which is to say fuck the familiars and all that, it does not coincide with Mommy's way of fighting. This is what eventually happens. And with mommy, mommy's like, no, we gotta fight everybody. We have to. Because her guilt is that strong, it doesn't even matter about who's with me and who's not. I, this is me. I have to do this. We have to do this. Kyoko cannot handle this. Kyoko is not good enough at the point in which that happens to end up to, to end up being such a liability. Because for one, she, she realizes she's starting to suck when she's put up against Mommy's regiment. But at the same time, she's literally getting hurt. And Mommy's having to cover for her and heal her over and over again. So it just does not coincide. But this right here, while she's still innocent, Kyoko, while she has not seen any of the bad stuff that Mommy's had to have seen, doesn't seem as bad right now. You can't really tell that it's going to get worse either. I'll be looking forward to working with you, Mommy Senpai. S senpai? I suppose so. She's my first Kohai, isn't she? And this is Mommy's thoughts. I feel bashful, embarrassed. Ever since becoming a magical girl, I've just been fighting every day. And I haven't been able to join a club, but... Every day. <laughs> she, she's not exaggerating. Every day. This is, and this is not an exaggeration because she has to. To keep going. Mommy explains how literally every day since surviving her accident, she's been fighting riches. This explains her strength and skill, but she wasn't fighting just to protect the city. It was out of an irreversible guilt for wishing she could survive the accident while forgetting slash ignoring everyone else. Everyone else. She's... She's not born as a magical girl. She had friends. She had acquaintances. She had people she spoke to. Now everybody's just someone who's in her life. Who, if they are in trouble, she's responsible for protecting them. But besides that, she's not close to anybody anymore like she used to be. Her own ideals got so corrupted 
but whatever they were before, after that accident, they got so corrupted to where at this point, uh, well, even now with Kyoko, she does not believe in anything other than fighting riches at any cost, even her own life. Because what she says is, I got this life out of a selfish wish, so I owe my life. I owe it, no matter what I have to give up. You know, Mami-san, your way of searching for riches is pretty effective. Back when I was working alone, I wasn't able to find them so quickly. Most of the inexplicable murders and suicides in this world are due to a riches curse. Equivalently, I think that means that riches prefer the souls of people with negative emotions. Right next to those very places where people congregate and let their spirits intermingle. Wouldn't there be darkness? I prioritize locations like that when I'm searching. In order to proactively limit the influence of riches on human society, it's very important that we find riches as early in their lives as possible. Hey, Mami-san, how long have you been a magical girl? Why do you ask? I was just curious. Hmm. A fight is finished. Yeah, so they, they just got back. They teleported back right here. And mommy's got the grief seed. I, I can't tell what mommy's doing with the grief seed. It looks as though mommy is about to replenish a soul gem. Which I would not be surprised if that ends up being Kyoko's soul gem. I don't have internet right now. I'm in the fucking boonies. But I'll add it in subtitles that that is Kyoko's soul gem. It's definitely one of their soul gems. Or I could be completely mistaken. In which case I'll cut it out because I don't like being wrong. <laughs> but yes, this is, a, this is a very interesting section. Before I, even, before I even talk about what's back here. Down at the bottom. I want to talk about mommy's expression you see mommy's really into her job wow wow shocker i didn't know that <laughs> you're like tell me something i don't know okay mommy's really into her job to the point that she sort of loses touch oh well really damn where'd you find that out man okay but we see it here we see it specifically when kyoko just says what she says about searching for riches and then mommy goes into all this this detailed shit about her philosophy for finding it's not even like the theory of how to find riches she's philosoph she's philosophizing too she's doing both at the same time there's really no reason for it like like if you really had this happening in real time her speaking she'd be speaking for like fucking 20 seconds just straight up just just continuing to talk and they're standing there they're just standing there she she picked up the grief seed and now they're just standing there and she's talking and Kyoko's like, damn. And as soon as Kyoko's like, damn, and asks Mommy that question, Mommy's like, she's like, did I say too much? Did I say something wrong? She's worried. Kyoko asks, how long have you been a magical girl? And then Mommy's on a defensive, why do you ask? Stuff like this makes me wonder, like would mommy really be a good friend? And the answer is, it depends. It depends on the type of person you are. Mommy is a very, is a very cynical person. She's very needy, but she won't let her neediness show, but she is very, usually, but she's very cynical. And so she's the type of person who will be very defensive inside as to whether or not you will meet her expectations. So if you're coming across as someone who seems as though they might be ready to falter sometime, she's gonna recoil. She's going to brace herself. And this is what mommy's doing. She's bracing herself. Because what mommy thinks here is two, is two things. One, she thinks that she might have said something a bit too controversial slash intimate when she was talking about her philosophy and what she thinks riches are like and why they end up being the places they go to. She doesn't know Kyoko's background. She doesn't know why Kyoko made that wish. So she could have easily have been saying something Kyoko did not want to hear without meaning to. She just got so caught up in what she was thinking. She just got so caught up in 
her lifestyle. And at the same time, even when Kyoko asks how long have you been a magical girl, Mommy is still on the offensive. That is a very innocuous question. No harm in that question at all. But Mommy is still worried. So to the actual quote here, misery loves company. This is when you talk, you, you talk about what Mommy actually says. Mommy alludes to riches there being broken magical girls. How they're broken magical girls without Mommy knowing it. What does Mommy say? She says, I think that means riches prefer the souls of people with negative emotions. Right next to those very places where people congregate and let their spirits intermingle. Wouldn't there be darkness? So what Mommy's saying without even realizing it is that these magical girls were broken. And they're envious of, and, and riches in general, are envious of the happiness that others around them get to have and get to share. Mommy knows then that riches are like this, that riches just want happiness. And she doesn't care. She knows that they take comfort in, I guess you could even say fulfilling, the riches of those who are down on their luck and who want it to be over, who want to die, who want to commit suicide, who are feeling that way, and bonding with people who are extremely depressed and so far caught up in the depression that there's no, there's, there's, there you can't save, you can't save them at all. It, it's kind of ironic because Mommy's crusade is to be a heroine of justice, but at the same time, she doesn't give a shit. She knows that if she can't help somebody, her her meaning for life is gone. So even if she's even if she's killing a rich who just wants to bond with somebody who is receptive to that rich, she does not care. She's going to kill that rich. What if a person wanted to commit suicide? What if they allowed the rich to possess them? Just because they, they were too afraid to do it themselves, but they allowed the rich to possess them because they still wanted it. It doesn't matter. Mommy still wants to kill the rich because it validates her reason for living. What she has now is a reason for living. She knows this. She knows that she's being a hypocrite and she doesn't care. But like I said, Mommy is not a necessarily good person. I believe I said that. If not, I'm very, very uh, remiss. Should have said this. She's not a good person. Just like Sai Kamai is knows not a good person. Well, I guess that's pretty easy. Just like fucking, um, just like fucking Sarah Ringwald not a good person. Okay? Mommy is not a good person. She's not a, she's not a, an evil person. Just like Sarah Ring, Ringwald is not an evil person. But they are not good people. They are not, they are not Goku. They are not Cecil. They are not any of these guys who you could consider to be morally just. They are not Luke Skywalker. They're not Luke Skywalker, okay? And I'm not talking about towards the end where he stays off the dark side and he's into the light and he's just using both sides. I'm talking about at the beginning when he's just a regular old kid who will use a blaster if he has to. If he goes down to Kane shooting romp rats, he's a jackass, okay? The dude who... Who's like, hello, when he's laughing at the droids. He doesn't treat them as, as equal beings. Just not a, a, a bad person, but not a good person. This is, this is mommy. This is Sarah Ringwald. This is mommy. Mommy is someone who knows what she wants and she wants to have it. And so the goodness, any element of goodness in what she does is just uh, it's an aside. It's just another like icing on the cake of her justification for what she does. But Mommy purposefully alludes to her being broken and needing the same company. Though only her constant fighting riches and sheer rail through guilt is keeping her from sinking. I've already said the latter. But her being broken and needing the same company? Well, where is Mommy searching? Where is Mommy searching? Locations like that is where she's searching. She's searching in locations where there's darkness. She's searching in locations where there are negative emotions. She's searching in locations where there are inexplicable suicides and murders, riches, curses. That's where she's searching. She's searching in places where she gravitates. Her soul gravitates. 
she's searching in places where it feels natural to search for her. Again, she's not gone. She's not a rich. She's not even 80% a rich. She's not drowning in despair or anything like that. But she is depressed. No matter how many bandages Kyoko or, or the tea and cakes she eats and whatever she tries to put on these boo-boos, the boo-boos are still there. It doesn't matter. Helping out these people, it doesn't matter. It's just something to keep her going on a little bit longer. And so she can relate to these bitches. And so she knows exactly where they would want to be. And because they're alike, she's extremely good at finding them and killing them. Because she can empathize with them. I made my contract about a year ago. If I hadn't met QB then, I wouldn't be alive today. I made a contract to live on. If I hadn't met QB then, I wouldn't be alive today. Kyoko's just looking surprised. Note that Kyoko made her wish when nobody was in danger. Ky Kyoko made her wish to satisfy her dad. And that was it. They were not in danger when she made that wish. Someone who's made a wish like Mommy Tomoe, that is something she can't she she had not conceived of. Or at the very least, she did not conceive it as being a Mami Tomore type of wish because Mami Tomore does not present herself as that type of person. Mami Tomore presents herself as, oh, I've got everything under control. I've never had a problem in my life. I'm, I'm just, <laughs> okay, well, it's not like that, but I have everything under control. You don't have to worry, little Kohai. Hey, would you like some tea? Everything is great. Everything is grand. You fight these witches and then come to my house afterwards. We can spend some time together. I'll make cake. Nothing wrong with Mami. The wrist saved her life? What the fuck? You? How? How you? How'd you end up in that situation? And it's only natural. Mommy acts in a way <laughs> that would reject any sort of notion that she's encountered any sort of stress, let alone something as bad as almost having died. It's, it's almost sad. Because in her desperate attempt to get friends by acting honestly superior, <laughs> like, but, but, but how, by acting how people she thinks people would want her to act, she makes in this case she makes Kyoko feel even worse. Not yet, but when Kyoko thinks back to this moment, she'll be like, "Mommy's, mommy lost her parents, and she's fighting on for their sake." And she's giving it her all every single day. She's going above and beyond. What the fuck am I doing? I just, I made a selfish wish for my dad just so I could feel happier about, about his success. And, and then after that, I, I don't want even, I don't even want to do it anymore. I'm so sad at my dad. I, at my, what happened with my dad? I don't even want to fight anymore. Mommy's fighting through all this shit. What the fuck is, what is wrong with me? What am I? But mommy is not trying to do this. She's not trying to make people feel inferior. It's just how it happens. And because Kyoko never opens up how she really feels to mommy, mommy can't know. I made a contract to live on. A year ago, my whole family was caught in a terrible traffic accident. Then and there, I made a contract and so only I survived. In the end, my parents couldn't be saved. It was a bitter and sad experience, but... Having accepted a fate of battle, I couldn't afford to grieve forever. And so at some point, I decided to follow this line of thought. Whenever anyone dies due to a rich or familiar, there will surely be others who grieve for them. Furthermore, I gained the power to fight riches and my life was saved. Then if I could save just one person from grief caused by a rich's actions, wouldn't it be my duty to fight on? That's how I became who I am today, I guess. That's what happened, huh? That's why I'm so happy you're fighting alongside me, Sakura-san. Up until now, there hasn't been anyone else to bear witness to the way I fight, you see. And Sakura Kyoko is silent. Real niggas drink Deer Park. Mommy's excuse is she doesn't want others to end up as she has, alone.
Now, regardless of how you want to slice that, it's an excuse. Mommy cares about herself, okay? She doesn't care about others as long as they can help her out. I'm not, I'm not gonna say she, like, she doesn't, like, she doesn't give a shit about, okay, that's the same thing. I'm not gonna say she doesn't, she has disdain for others, how about that? I won't say she, she doesn't have, I won't say she has disdain for others' feelings, but she prioritizes her own overall. And so she's talking about how others would grieve if a loved one or some acquaintance or whatever is killed by a rich, but regardless of whether you want to say it's, it's, it's refer my quote is referring to that or it's referring to whoever she's teaming up with she doesn't want them to be alone no it's not that it's whenever you want to slice it like that it's an excuse mommy cares about herself notice her saying she's been fighting multiple times every day for a solid year a year she says this she says for a about a year ago how about that about a year ago give or take a few months <laughs> no I'm, I'm just kidding again it doesn't it, do it really doesn't matter because with Homura and all the decades of time loops and shit she's been doing, she's fought less than Mommy. Exponentially less. Mommy has fought... She, it sums it up with this quote right here. With Mommy saying, if I could just save... If I could save just one person from grief caused by a rich's actions. One person. She's not talking about the victims of a rich. She's talking about the indirect victims of a rich. If a rich kills somebody... Any of those people could be grieving around that person, that sinner victim. So, every single witch who shows up and anything connected with that witch, she's going to kill so that those potential indirect victims don't come to be. She does not want even the chance of anybody anywhere around her suffering because of a witch. That means she's always going to go after it. As long as she's awake, she's going to go after it. I have no idea how she doesn't sleep well. She's a magical girl. But besides that, she somehow just rules herself to keep fighting over and over and over and over again. Over and over again. Over and over and over and over and over again. Over and over. It doesn't, it does not stop. Okay? It's like, pot, shit, don't stop. The motherfucking casket drop. It don't. It does not stop. And her casket won't drop. Because she's a magical girl. The only thing holding her back is herself. That's the only way she can die. Is if she is, well, if a rich kills her. But like conventional means? No, not likely. Rich kills her or she turns into a witch. The latter is not going to really happen. I mean, she, she is slowly, 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 slowly fading. Very slowly very slowly so much that it, it almost doesn't even matter she was like locked in the halfway point when she made this decision to dedicate herself to a fate of battle but at that point it was like ooh, uh, ooh, 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 ooh. it hardly even matters sorry for the obnoxious sound effects but i have to really strain that point because she she's not someone who will just after a decision is made her emotional state will be volatile based on it. She's not a fucking Sayaka. Sorry, Sayaka. She's not a fucking Sayaka Mickey. She's not a, a, a loose bitch with her emotions. She's someone who is very, very solid. And so whether she's doing something good or something bad, she's doing it for a reason. And she doesn't give a fuck. Okay? She doesn't give a fuck. She just knows that she wants her end to be met. And so if it rears away at her, it is at a very subconscious level. And when it finally surfaces, she represses it masterfully. She, she, she represses that bitch. And then it's back to the 50% and a half. This is why she's so much above other magical girls who are worse trackers and stingier with their energy. All these selfish wishes that people made. Mommy's wish was selfish. Yes, it was selfish. If you really want to slice it that way, it was selfish. Hardly compares to any of these other pricks, but her wish was selfish. And so she can relate to the selfish riches. And since, like I said, she can empathize with them, she knows the best way to find them, the best location to find them, and the best way to take them out. She's better than all those other people who don't care, who can't identify with what they're tasked to kill, can't identify with their targets. What better hunter than the hunter who can dress up as their prey? 
than the hunter who can who can mask themselves and and blend in as the prey in their prey's environment. That is Mami Tomoe. This Mami Tomoe has no need for the grief seeds as much as anybody else because this Mami Tomoe is sustaining her own grief and her own salvation in a cycle. Her salvation isn't much, but her grief is way more than the average person. So, the more she saves herself, the bigger the effect. Every time she kills a bitch, I gotta do it again. Gives her more experience because she does it so often. And because these other magical girls are so damned selfish, so damned she is too, but so much worse than mommy, what ends up happening is anytime she runs into them, they feel even worse about themselves. Regardless though, they feel worse about themselves. And so they become the riches that mommy ends up blowing past <laughs> while she lives on. Now this right here says entropy slash balance plus mommy's fighting rate. Okay, so I know what this is talking about. This wants me to explain just how mommy can keep fighting these riches. And it is very simple. You would assume that with the amount of riches mommy fights, she ends up running out eventually. But no. Because of entropy. Entropy is, at least in the terms of this story, the law of balance. Energy balance. So as one source of energy depletes, it must be refilled by the same energy source in a different location. Okay? That location is, in this case, planet-wide. So if a rich dies somewhere, somewhere else, a rich is born. If a magical girl is born, makes a contract, then somewhere else a magical girl will die or become a rich. And that energy will end up being equivalent across the board. For the most part. I mean, it's not... It's not one-to-one, -one, but it's fluctuating so it can stay around that one-to-one -one range, right? Because if it were really one-to-one, -one, then there would be no death. There would be no birth. It would have been the equivalent the entire time, right? There have to have been one that came first, and there's always one that comes first and one that comes last between, in this case, the magical girl and the rich. But my point is this. My point is this, okay? My point is that mommy is so fucking bloodthirsty that every time she kills a rich or a familiar, a new rich or familiar is made. How, how do you figure? Well, there's many ways you can go about saying this. I'm just going to list two, okay? Because I don't have all day. I'm not even anywhere near page 56. What page am I on? Shit says I'm on page... Uh, fucking 15, okay? Way number one, this could happen. Magical girls went out of riches to fight. Their soul gems black out. They die, become riches. Because mommy was being greedy. Number two, all these witches are dying. So there is a dearth, there is a lack of rich in the area. What this means is that at this point, more riches are going to come to that area. Because now it is more open. The environment is more open for riches to be at. If you took a predator in, a, in an environment, right, and they were the king of the, the jungle, you kill that predator, all of a sudden, all the animals who were trying to avoid that area, who were predators, but they weren't as, as big as the king of the jungle, now they can go in and start competing. You kill those guys, now the other little guys can start competing more. You kill those guys, then the other guys are going to move in eventually and start competing there. The riches just has, it happens faster because they can teleport and portalize and all that shit. But this is what happens with mommy. She's destroying the environment in terms of riches. She's just wrecking it completely. And as for whether or not she knows this, she, she doesn't. But if she did, she wouldn't care. Because, well, if, if she did, then she would have to... Depends on whether or not you know if she knows that these are once magical girls, then she would care. But otherwise, she wouldn't care because she she just needs to make the world a safer place until there is no one left to grieve over any potential death caused by a rich. She doesn't care. They exist to be cold. They exist to be murdered. They exist to be slaughtered from her point of view.
Kyoko's unnoticed reaction says she can sympathize with the less fortunate mommy. No one can bear witness to her involvement with her father's success. So she invites mommy to her house. This is, this is true. Because right after this, she invites mommy to her house. I mean, doesn't she say it? So you go have some tea. Um, and then look right here. Mommy's like, uh-oh. As soon as Kyoko says, um, she doesn't want to have tea with me? What, what's going on? Instead of going back to your place, would you like to come to mine? You, you always got to feel sorry for mommy, how, how fragile her confidence is. She's very confident, but again, as a mask, she is so worried that this person will leave her. And it's not just the fact that this is the one friend she's had. It's the fact that she thinks it's her fault. That it's something she might have done. But Kyoko, again, she says, you want to come to my place? And right before that, up until now, there hasn't been anyone else to bear witness to the way I fight, you see. When she says her entire past, <laughs> Kyoko just feels like shit because Kyoko's wish was nothing like Mommy's wish. And Kyoko's, uh, and Kyoko's life, excuse me, was nothing like Mommy's life. And so she wants to treat Mommy now, like how Mommy's been treating her all this time despite what she's been going through without Kyoko even knowing it. So back to the, um, Mommy's face here. However, Mommy's lingering distrust of Kyoko is still evident. Her cynical tendencies don't mean she's not benevolent or even hopeful that Kyoko might change with her benevolence. But what it means is that she's not naively expecting a long-lasting return off anyone she's kind to. So even though she's being benevolent, and especially since she's not being told exactly what she's doing right or wrong. Kyoko's just that kohai, that student. Mommy is worried that Kyoko is going to end up leaving her, betraying her. For any reason at this point. So at their house, you see her dad, Kyoko's dad. I'm a minister at a church, indeed. I preached that rich would bring joy to the world, but for many years, the people would not accept my teachings. I brought painful memories upon my family. I don't like this guy. It's not evident right now. I don't like this guy at all. But one day, abruptly, people began to show up and listen to what I had to say. I honestly could not believe what I saw. When I opened my eyes that morning, I saw a great crowd of people who sought to hear my teachings. He believed in himself and sowed the seeds of happiness, which at long last had bloomed. Just as my husband said, what, their, uh, what Kyoko's mom said, and then mommy says, I get it. So, well, let's, let's see what I say first before I even say anything. Uh, I think that I do say that I need to explain this guy's personality. So there isn't much to explain. He's just a, a piece of shit who's written in there to give Kyoko a problem. And Momo. And their mother. But, <laughs> but he's... He's got something in them. He's got something in them that's develops Kyoko a little bit. So I'll get into that in a second, aka in several minutes. <laughs> Mommy recognizes the difference between her selfish wish and Kyoko's altruistic wish. Yes, exactly. Exactly. She recognizes that Kyoko's wish was for somebody else. And her wish was for herself. But they end up having the same end. What, did I, what do I mean by that? What do I mean by the same end? Well, Kyoko decides she's going to fight her own way. She doesn't care who's happy or who's sad about it. She ends up suffering for it. Mommy, the same thing. She tries to dress it up with nobility, with righteousness, but it's she, she knows it's a facade. And so she's in agony too. The only difference is she's better at hiding it. Nobody listened to what father had to say, let alone understood him. It was so frustrating. I couldn't stand it. I see. You made a wish for your father's sake. And this right here is her making the wish. She's getting her soul gem, all that stuff. Is it so strange to want to grant somebody else's wish? 
No, not at all. This is this is where Kyoko starts to. It's still not evident, but Kyoko was starting to slip even more because what we see is that Kyoko has a different philosophy than mommy or she she thinks rather that mommy has a different philosophy than her she thinks that mommy made a wish to save herself and so that was the most utilitarian the most useful wish she could have made because it helped her and so while i'm helping myself i'm i'm better my wish was better but you you wished for your dad that's a race of a wish you should have wished some, something for yourself and Kyoko's inferior, inferiority complex because, well, I wish for my dad and you wish for yourself and you're such a better magical girl than me and all this stuff. Maybe, are you saying that I should have wished for myself? Are you saying it's so bad that I wished for my dad instead? This is what Kyoko thinks. And then it would have been much easier, of course, if mommy had just come out and said how much she regrets the fact that she was not able to save her parents because she made, in her mind, a selfish wish what she said instead was well they weren't able to be saved i made a contract and only i survived and they couldn't be saved so now i have to fight but she didn't she didn't blame herself for this and so what kyoko thinks is that there wasn't any other option mama just made the best wish she could have made for herself and she's thinking that kyoko could have made a better wish too by wishing for herself to get the most she could have gotten out of that wish. When in reality, mommy could have wished for the others to survive, but she was dying at that moment and she was almost dead. And that was pretty much her last conscious thought before she completely faded out and just happened to be revived on the spot by Kyubi was that she did not want to die. It was a very cheap way to handle things by Kyubi, but we know how Kyubi operates. So it doesn't really matter, right? It doesn't really matter. I just thought that it was such a and don't and don't please no one come to me and say in this comment section or in an email or some shit. Well, you can just tell that mommy deep down is a very selfish person at that point because deep down this is the risk she wanted. When all the cards were on the table, with all the the marbles, she wished for herself. I wish I lived. No, 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 no. She, it was adrenaline. She couldn't control what she was thinking. These are just rapid thoughts that were flooding her mind as she was dying. Don't let me die. I don't want to die. Just because she didn't think, oh, don't let me and my dad and my mom die, doesn't mean that she did not care about her dad and her mom deep down inside. Does that mean that she was even self-centered or self-motivated deep down inside? This is just the one thought that, that entered her head that was counted as the wish by Kyubi. And since the accident was so sudden and she was dying immediately after it, she didn't have time to dwell on the type of wish she would have wanted to make. I just, I just thought that if such a wish could have fulfilled my own wishes at the same time, that would have been even better, that's all. The battles we fight are always filled with danger, and there may even be times when we have to sacrifice ourselves. If I think of that as the price I paid for my wish, I can bear it. But if I don't, in that case, I'm just fine. Ever since I was little, I saw Father working the hardest to make everyone happy. The first step in realizing his wish would be to make him happy, wouldn't it? Yeah, it would. Let me protect everyone's happiness. That's my wish. Yes, you'll be fine. Let me just read this thing right here. I, I'm, I pretty much say it all. Mommy's essentially saying she wishes she could have been clear-headed enough to make such an altruistic wish as Kyoko's while saving her own life. That's that's what she's saying. She's not saying that Kyoko should have made the same type of selfish wish as hers. She's saying the exact opposite. That it, well, not the exact opposite, but she wants it. She wants it all. If I could have made the wish I made to save my life as well as having their lives saved too, that's what I would have wanted. I would have wanted to live with them. Not they live, not I live, but both of us live. That's what she would have wanted. Kyoko, of course, is like, yeah, she doesn't understand it. She thinks that mommy wants her nothing. That the best wish she could have made. 
I, I, can't, I can't really say wants for nothing, but she, she thinks that mommy in her pragmatism thinks that the risk she made was the best risk she could have made, even if she misses her parents. And she thinks that Kyoko could have made a better risk too, because her parents weren't in danger in particular. But no, no, that's not what mommy wants. She wants her own life to have been saved. She wants the same Mrs. Kyoko's too. She wants her family back. However, she was on the point of dying and was unable to be that clear-headed to make such a risk. So she considers her suffering as penitence for her selfishness. She considers that what she has to do now, she considers that this fighting she has to do, this suffering she has to do, is her way of repenting for the risk she made where only she ended up surviving, even if she couldn't really control it. That's her, that's her way of it. It's her way of dealing with it. And the sad part is, she knows that, but she tells herself that because it's the only way she can go on living. Imagine you're a, a very religious person, okay? Unless you already are, you don't imagine. And you happen to survive a tragedy. Let, let's just think out of the blue here. Let's say a, a plane crashed and you were the only one who survived. Okay, that's a bit far-fetched. You and like a few other people were the only ones who survived. Doesn't really make a difference. But all your family died. Okay, all your family died. And so you have survivor's guilt. Now, what are you going to feel? Are you going to feel as, as though, well, it just happened that way because of physics and I just happened to be in the right place at the right time and I'm not going to go into this. Or are you going to feel... Well, I survived for a reason. I shouldn't have survived, I think, but it, now that if I'm still here, I have to do something. And so you go out and you try and do what you think are good deeds. But even though you're doing these good deeds, the pain is still there. The pain is still there, and it might not ever go away. But it's the only way to justify the fact that you're still alive. It's the only way to make you feel better that you're still living. Because you were put in this situation for a reason. You have to do something. In mommy's case, her reason is she has to help other people. That's the reason she ended up living. Because she cannot comprehend, well, well she cannot live with the fact that it just happened that way. It's just some bullshit. That's why she ended up living and her parents didn't and now she's in this fix. Because of some bullshit. Some happenstantial, random chance bullshit. The only way to justify it in her mind is for her to take up the mantle now and for her family do what she thinks needs to be done. Regardless of whether or not she believes this was fated to her, per se, doesn't matter. It's her fate now. It's what she has to do to make up for it. Kyoko sort of understands, but less how mommy's feeling and more that she doesn't matter, more that it doesn't matter what she has to face if her father's happy. In doing so, she cuts mommy off, which really frustrated me when I first saw this. Mommy doesn't correct her. She's happy enough to be with Kyoko. And considering nothing bad has happened yet, mommy believes Kyoko can last under the eternal pressure since she seems truly satisfied. Now, this is important to note because uh, mommy is not the type of person to hold up a mask when it doesn't suit her she holds up that mask because it suits her it helps her to feel better and it helps others to feel better about her from what she sees at least however you can see on her face like literally right here that she just got cut off by kyoko while she was mourning her parents and in the midst of, ex of explaining herself to kyoko and Kyoko just cut her off and did not understand a word that mommy said. And mommy just lets it go. Why does she let it go? Why doesn't she try to say, at least, well, what I really meant was, that's, that's not exactly the point. Or, I mean, I get what you're saying, but for me, well, because she doesn't, one, it's too late. It doesn't matter. Her wish is made and she knows it. She's resigned to a fate of battle. And two, long as she has that person with her it doesn't matter as long as they can fight together 
then it helps her fate be a little bit less depressing. She seems different from all the other magical girls. I didn't think it was possible for magical girls to understand one another so well. Wow, mommy, you made an error. It's not was possible, it's were possible. That's the one time you're going to see a high school girl make a grammatical mistake. And then they, and, and this is important because she seems different from all the other magical girls. What was I saying? I was saying that Kyoko misunderstood her. That does not mean that she can be different, that she can't be different, excuse me, from all the other magical girls. One, the point is they're fighting. And so they're reading each other as they, as they fight. They're in sync, completely in sync. They are an excellent team. They sure beat the shit out of Homura and Sayaka. Right? They sure beat the shit out of Sayaka and anyone. They're a really good team, okay? A really good team. The only team that could perhaps be better than them is uh, Homura and Mami. But that's less teamwork and more, and more so uh, strength. Just pure brute force <laughs> and, and skill individually. Now, my point is this, okay? With Mami here, we're saying she looks different from all the other magical girls. Or she's saying this because, look up here. Let me protect everyone's happiness. That's my wish. Yes, you'll be fine. This is mommy's wish too. She wants to protect everybody's happiness. Even though this is like some... To her, it's still what she holds on to. It's the only thing she holds dear. Other than Kyoko herself. Because without... Wanting to help people, she has nothing. She has nothing. And really, if we're being honest here, she holds this dear to her more than Kyoko. More than she holds Kyoko dear to her. She wants to help other people. That is the crux of her character right now. That is the core of her character right now. And when she sees that Kyoko feels the same way, naturally, well then that's, that's it. They understand each other. And we're looking down here, we're looking down, we're looking down, and you see that Kyoko was making her Waso Phantasma. As you can see here, it says Sakura-san finishing move, Waso Phantasma, translated Red Phantom. Now, I personally think that sounds cool. <laughs> I, I personally think that Waso Phantasma sounds pretty damn cool. E even if it is Italian, I'll just get <laughs> But it, it does sound pretty fucking cool. I don't know why people don't like m mommy's move names because she comes up with some badass names. Chiro Finale. But, but the... the <laughs> point here well there's, there's really two of them notice one that she's not calling her a student she's calling her sakura-san she's not calling and sakura-san isn't called well sometimes she says senpai but sometimes she says son she says mommy son or, or tomore son i forgot which one mommy is not into that stiff student uh student teacher shit she is not into that she is into we're battle partners. We're friends. I can mentor you. I can help you do things. I can give you advice and strategies. But we're not going to have this artificial barrier between us. To where I have to treat you a certain way and you have to respect me twofold. That's not what's going on here. Now, Mommy shows Sakura how to do this move. And it's real impressive when you consider that Mommy shows Sakura how to do her own move that she ends up using. And... This, if you can't really tell, it's more than one page. I don't know how many pages it is, but this is a fucking book. And it's probably a guide on how to use that technique because, of course, Sakura's just learned it. Notes say, Mommy helps Kyoko discover her Waso Phantasma, which she initially doesn't want to name Waso Phantasma, as Mommy suggested. And since she's the friend and not the teacher, he's not, bitch, you better shake this fucking mouth. It's, it's not... I know best. I am your sensei. She's like, well, okay, if you don't want it. And then Kyoko's like, mm, you know, I'll take it. She doesn't like just say it outright. Like, okay, yeah, I want it. She just sort of grows on her in her own private time. And she decides to, okay, she's pretty good with the names. I'll give her that. So it works out in the end. But mommy doesn't push it is the point times three. She doesn't push the teacher shit. The student shit, it stays where it's supposed to be with the two of them more or less as equals. This move saves Kyoko's life against the rich that attacks her father's church. This is ironic because Mommy indirectly has now, well, will have saved Kyoko's life twice. She will have directly saved her life once. No, twice, excuse me, and indirectly once. So, so she would have saved her life three times. 
Yeah, three times. The first time being back at the start. The second time being in the church. The first time when they fight at the church, Kyoko and the rich. She beats that rich and she needs the Rosso Fantasma, which is something that mommy taught her. The second time she uses nothing because she loses her magic at the church. She fights another she fights another rich and she doesn't have any magic. So mommy literally bursts in and saves her. This is three times mommy has saved her life. And mommy here, ever since that day, when I decided I'd fight for the people's sake, I'd always wanted this. At long last, I met a companion who shares my ideals. So this really, this really shows you where her priorities lie. She wants a companion to make her feel better. But that day when she made that desire to go ahead and fight for the people's sake, her reality, that was something she was pursuing even without anybody there with her. So that's her stronger. But the one right under that, the companion, that's not that far behind. And as a matter of fact, that's the only thing right now that's bringing her happiness. The fighting for the people shit, that's just life support. No enemy can stand against us if you and I fight together. Come on, don't be careless. As we are now, don't you think we could even defeat a Rawpurgis knot? I, I forgot to pronounce that shit. Rawpurgis Raw knot? Yes, there it is. Rawpurgis knot? <laughs> Rawpurgis? One of those? Yep, a colossal, super dreadful rich that shows up in magical girl rumors. So, what mommy thinks of Kyoko so far is the case that she's kind of careless. But, however, Kyoko's not suffered any serious losses yet, unlike mommy. As such, her naive optimism is through the roof. And so, it's not only that she's not suffered any serious losses in battle, which is partly because of the fact that she's with mommy, <laughs> But it's also the fact that she's not suffered any serious personal losses. Any losses dear to her, like mommy has. A.K.A. Day One. <laughs> You're quite confident in yourself. A bit full of myself, huh? No, not at all. It might be good that you have such a tremendous goal. <laughs> and she's laughing and, huh? Aren't you laughing a, a bit too much, mommy-san? But you might be right. I think the two of us really could defeat it. If one day, a oh, purchase not really comes, let's protect the city together. No, this doesn't really have the same connotation you might think after you've read it the second time. Uh, again. Although mommy agrees, she agrees for the future as they are now. And she subtly asks Kyoko to remain. Kyoko says, as we are now, don't you think we could even defeat our oh, purchase not or defeat even our oh, purchase not? This is the key word, or the key phrase, excuse me. As we are now, not in the future. Because in the future, things might be different. In the future, Kyoko might have left. Kyoko might not be there. So, if they do find a raw purchase knot, what he's wanting, uh, what she's wanting, what Molly's wanting, is for Kyoko to just be the same optimistic, happy-go-lucky, eager to work with her type of person she is right now. Fighting alongside her and not rushing off, being all brash, eager to work with her type of individual she is right now. However, one day, everything changed. You think I'm going to let a rich like you chow down here? Father's church, my family, everyone, I'll protect them all. So Kyoko, she fights the rich that attacks her father's church. And everybody, and everybody who happened to be there at that moment was possessed by the rich. The rich's familiars, excuse me. And Kyoko defeats the rich, and then the familiars are defeated too, or they run away, and then... Kyoko? And she is seen. And here's Momo. Mm. Sorry for waking you up. Nothing's going on. Go back to sleep. Good night, Momo. He was like a fake ass Hugo. Everybody he has his hand like that. I'm sorry. Okay. Now, and he gives her a talk. Describe father. Now, when I say her, I don't mean Momo. I mean Kyoko. He gives Kyoko a talk. You see Kyoko's boots right here. She's still in her transformation. So they have a talk about this guy's lie that he's been living <laughs> and about Kyoko's lie that she's been living stringing him along what do i mean by this okay let's see how do i describe this guy uh 
Well, as of right now, he cares about no one, really. He doesn't care about Momo. You see that he's shooting Momo from Kyoko so she can't see her sister as her sister is. He doesn't care about Kyoko because he views Kyoko as a witch and he doesn't want her sister to be exposed to this witch. She isn't a witch, obviously. She's a magical girl and she fights the witches, but when she tells him this, he won't care. Fucking Orville Wright Plains. Damn it, man. Just fucking relax. The day of Thanksgiving, you guys gotta take a fucking personal flight. Anyway, what I was saying is that... Let's just start from the top. He's a, he's a, he's a douchebag, okay? He's a prick. He's an asshole. He's a dastardly dickhead. He's the type of guy who cares about only what he cares about. Who cares about only what he likes. And who tries to force that onto other people. To their... Whatever the opposite of benefit is. It's, it's like, like Mei Mazaki. I hate characters like that. I hate characters who only give a shit about themselves and it's to the detriment of others. That's the word I was looking for, to others' detriment. He does not give a shit about his family. He pretends he does, but he doesn't. He has been... He, he sort of reminds me of uh, Falling Down, if you've seen that movie. I don't want to spoil it, so I'm not going to say too much about it, but he, he reminds me of that a little bit, just a little bit. He's, he's a guy who will go ahead and put his family through a whole bunch of misery having to see his badass attitude i don't mean badass as in a cool way but badass having to see him deal with people who don't like him and who mock his family his entire family give them all a bad reputation because of him he continues to do it he continues to depression and and all sorts of shit drinking he has liquor on deck because he wants to reach the masses but he doesn't care about his own family. He doesn't care about what they want. He doesn't care about their happiness. So he's always in this sullen mood because he, he's not a successful pastor. No one, no one wants to come to his church. I have no idea how the fuck he found that church. I have no idea. He must have like just... like Someone must have like lost their rent. And when they were getting kicked out, he made a deal with the new guys or something. I don't, I don't know what the fuck. I don't know how he got a church. Because he sure as hell ain't get one built. His broke ass. I don't know. Maybe maybe the mom is the breadwinner. But besides that inconsistency, what, what we have, we've got a guy who puts his religion over that of everybody around him. His daughters, his wife, and the people who don't care about what he has to say, he doesn't ask why. He doesn't ask. We don't even know what his religion really is. We don't know what he thinks about it because he doesn't really substantiate it at all. He doesn't justify it. I have to preach the word. You guys don't want to hear the word. Oh my goodness, you don't want to hear the word. It's almost it's almost like deprecating. It almost mocks religion, this guy. But it, it's it's played seriously. And he doesn't he do, he do, he just doesn't show any concern. He doesn't show any concern when Kyoko comes in. This is where I was getting. When Kyoko comes in, he actually no, I'm gonna get into it. Because I'm going to get into it when they actually have their argument. But it's going to back up everything I say. Because this guy doesn't really have any sort of depth to him. Except for the fact that he cares about what he thinks. He cares about other people wanting to believe him. And he cares so much about that. He cares so much about himself. That even if someone is helping him. Like Kyoko. If someone's just helping him to get to where he wants to be. Fuck that. It's about me. I want to get there myself. I don't need any fucking help. And so his family is poor because he can't get a fucking job and his mom probably spent all the money on a church or he blew all his money on a church and just to make him happy. And meanwhile, they're barely scraping by, even though it doesn't really look like it, but they're barely scraping by and they're, they're sad. They're all miserable until Kyoko makes her rich. Suddenly they get more money and now they're living better. And it, it was... And it wasn't really set, it wasn't really shown in what I was showing because I was skipping around, but you saw it in the, in the uh, quotes from uh, before, the other stuff that they were not, they were having a very hard time before Kyoko's wish because this dude was a self-centered bastard. See Kyoko right here, stuff in her fucking face. She, 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 she's used to not having food because up until recently, she did not have any fucking food. So she just keeps eating 
even her mommy is not. It's like she does. She like in Japanese culture. This goes against Japanese culture, and there's a point to be made from it. When a guest invites you to their house, and you're you're, and this is stereo stereotypical Japanese culture. It's not, of course, what everybody's going to do in Japan. <laughs> Just because you're Japanese or you, you happen to be in Japan. When someone invites you into their house and gives you food, you don't wolf it down in, in front of them unless you're uh, you're obliged to. Like, please do. But otherwise, you try to moderate and let the other person eat along with you. It's more of a, a relationship type of thing. You're a guest in their house, so you're not going to Goku with the food they've given you. So if we do end up making someone unhappy, would it be better for them to be killed by a rich and mourn thereafter? Or would it be better for them to live on and be scorned by the ones they hold dear? If everyone is going to end up having a bad time, should I not have been saving people in the first place? Are you speaking of someone in particular? Kyoko can't answer that. Perchance a rich attacked your family? Nothing like that. It was a hypothetical question. It's just, just like you can't really talk with other magical girls, I was thinking that it must be difficult to explain the way we are to regular people who don't know about riches. So, Kyoko goes around about hypothetical to suggest she believes it might have been better for her ungrateful father to have been possessed by the rich she just beaten. So, the rich was attacking her family. We saw this. At the very least, it was attacking the people related to her family in that they were the congregation of their church, their family church. And her father happened to be there. Her father was about to be a victim of that rich. The rich was attacking her family. But what she just said, would it be better for them to be killed by a rich and mourn thereafter? That right there is saying, well, what if my dad thought, and, and remember, she had already spoken with her dad. You saw her about to have that talk. And her dad gave her a piece of his mind. Because all his success had been based on a wish. And he don't like that. I wish I was successful. I wish I had a billion dollars. And suddenly a God gives me a billion dollars. Man, I didn't work for that. I didn't work. I didn't want. No, I'm not trying to call Kyoko God. So calm down if anyone's upset about that. I didn't. I didn't earn that. I'm mad. It's not by my hands. It's not by my hands. The kind of dude this guy is. Would it be better for them to live on but be scorned by the ones they held dear? If he lived on without any influence from Kyoko, a witch, then what would happen? He would be scorned again. So this just goes to show that Kyoko is thinking now, maybe maybe he didn't maybe he didn't need to be saved by me maybe he didn't need me at all maybe it would have been better maybe he would have been happier suffering as he had before as opposed to finding me being at, at his side i don't know why he would think that but this is what he thinks and so this is what kyoko thinks if everyone's going to end up having a bad time, should I not have been saving people in the first place? The congregation and her father. Even if her father weren't attacked by a rich, he might have been killed himself by now. He was already in massive depression. And so Kyoko was proposing, hypothetically, what if she'd gone back to that? And mommy goes, Certainly, I don't think what we do is something that we can say is entirely for the best. But if we don't act, many more people will perish. If you're going to use the possibility of a bad outcome as an excuse to think that you shouldn't have done anything in the first place, I can't agree with you. I can't agree with you. Kyoko's quiet. And here we see it, that Mommy's feelings of guilt are stronger than her desire to have company. She's completely serious and she doesn't care, she really at all, how blunt she's being while she's disagreeing with Sakura here. She even says the chance to do good is worth the mourning of someone who lost a loved one in a rich. Now, I'm sorry for the typos, but luckily I already explained that part. 
I already explained that. Mommy knows that she's doing potentially some bad things when it comes to saving a person who has been bewitched. She knows that she's taking up grief seeds that could go to other people, and but she also knows that other people could be mourning those who've been bewitched could have won it so, and the rich could have won it just to help out the person who was seeking that rich. Now, people can't see riches, but they know about spirits. People know about spirits. So, if a rich is viewed as a spirit, and a person calls on the spirit to give them the strength to kill themselves, whether it's implicitly or whether they actually call on that spirit, if a rich comes, well, regardless of how imaginary this might seem, point is, the person wanted to die, right? The person wanted to be killed. They did not want to live anymore. And they would have been happier in death than they were in life. Now, am I advocating for suicide, even in this story? No. Personally, I'm not advocating for or against it if there's no other solution. And I don't think it's any of my business. But what I'm saying is, if a person wants to kill themselves, you have no right to stop them. Unless you are absolutely sure that you can provide an alternative, or you're going to stick with them all the way to try and provide an alternative, whether or not you're sure that you can. Mommy doesn't care about this, though. Mommy doesn't care about these ramifications. She doesn't care about anybody's life getting worse once they're saved. What she cares about is feeling better herself and then leaving. I did a good deed, okay. I gotta do another one, or else I'm gonna feel bad again. And damn the rich. Damn the lonely rich who just wants to be with somebody else. Even if that person's not committing suicide. If the rich just wants to host, Fuck trying to reason with them. Fuck trying to make them just go away. That's not on her agenda. That's not how she rolls. Mommy is fucking cutthroat and we see right here in this text that she does not even entertain for a split second the possibility of how a person might feel if it involves letting a rich live. Let alone how a rich might feel. Riches die. Because if not, there's a chance that somebody might die. There's a chance that somebody might be sad somewhere. And so all riches have to die. Now obviously, if you've seen something like Rebellion, you know that not all riches are bad. But this is not Rebellion. Neither is this rebellion mommy. This is the different story mommy. And mommy in this timeline is way different from mommy in that timeline. Mommy in these other timelines, way different from a timeline where riches are eh, given a little bit more freedom. Shown a bit more in death. Mommy doesn't look at riches in death. What mommy looks at is as broad as abstract, as surface as she possibly can in order to justify that these are just mindless beasts that need to be slaughtered. And so this is what we do a lot of times in real life. I'm not going to get into it. I'm not trying to go on philosophical here. I'm talking about people with people and people with animals and animals with other animals. And I'm not trying to get on a high horse either. But mommy has her reason for doing things. And so as soon as that reason is challenged, she fires back at it. She is not, and she does not care that it's Kyoko. She does not give a fuck who it is. This is, this is Kyoko. This is the person she wanted to be with. This is the person she's happy to be with right now. And Kyoko's having some trouble right now. She needs some good advice. But while mommy's willing to offer it, she's not going to go that far. Because at that point, if her morals are questioned, then she's going to start feeling pressure. And that's the last thing mommy wants to feel. She doesn't want her own morals pressured, because if that happens, she might start to go back to how she was before. So mommy smiles and she says, 
Don't push yourself too hard. You can always talk to me if you'd like. Okay. So, before I even say, moreover, the fact is, Mommy already knows Kyoko's either slipped the truth, nearly slipped, or is thinking of revealing her secret. So, this mean, when I say slipped, I mean she's exposed the fact that she's a witch to someone close to her. The truth is that she has actually slipped. She's actually exposed that fact. She hasn't nearly done it, and she isn't thinking of doing it, but she's done it. To Mommy, it doesn't really matter, because what matters is killing the riches, not whether somebody happens to see you and how they might feel about it. Who cares how somebody feels about seeing you do it? You have to do it. If they, if they don't understand, they can get lost. And this is what Mommy does not understand because she's not ever been in that situation. Mommy lost her family, which Kyoko is going to use against Mommy, but she's going to do it all sorts of fucked up and not right at all. Like literally right or morally right. She's just going to just throw that in Mommy's face and it's not going to be fair. But Mommy really doesn't care. She, she can't relate. She lives by herself. And so she has no way of knowing what it's like to feel a person who's close to you losing faith in you, losing trust in you, no longer loving you because they think you're some sort of demon. If you, if you have one, just, just think about a secret you might have that you are operating in society. You're operating around your family, your job, your friends. And you know that if that secret got out, they would never look at you the same. You might not go to prison, maybe, maybe not. But you would really, really turn some people off. And, and they might not want anything to do with you ever again. This is what Kyoko was dealing with. And mommy does not... She understands, but she doesn't understand. Because she can't. It's impossible for her to. She has no one close to her like that, except for Kyoko. So mommy's saying, you can always talk to me, means Kyoko can always be honest with her situation. Because mommy is just going to look at it from a third person point of view. Not really being able to... She can empathize with it, but she can't really factually put herself in Kyoko's shoes because she doesn't have what Kyoko has, which is a father in this scenario. And even thinking about her father, well, she's trying to help her father out. She's trying to represent her father in doing the hunting that she's doing. So it doesn't factor in anyway what Kyoko is feeling. In the end, mommy's like, as long as you go and talk to me about what's on your mind, I'll, I'll talk to you. It's all right. Just don't bring up that, that riches stopping the killing them again we, we won't talk about that anymore i can't agree with you on that but hey, uh, besides that we're fine you know, just anytime you want to talk to me about particularly what what i know is on your mind we can skip all the, the extra stuff skip all that riches crap just talk about we'll talk about your dad i can help you out with that and then she sees her dad and her dad is in his room beers everywhere fucking slumped over the, the desk and just looking like total shit you know, Father, I still love everything you preached. That's why I was so glad when everyone began listening to what you had to say. After all, you had always been saddened by the misfortune of this world, and I finally got to see you happy. I... That's all an illusion you created, isn't it? Everyone who came... Uh, to... <laughs> this church was there not because of their faith, but because they had been led astray by the powers of a rich. Those poor souls. Did you then plan to take the lives of those who had bewitched? Were they sacrifices for your contract with the devil? That you, daughter of a clergyman, would sell your soul to the devil? <laughs> and Kyoko's stunned. Now the funny thing is, there is a little bit of truth in this. QB is basically the devil. <laughs> he, he basically is. And they're not sacrificing people, but they are sacrificing other magical girls and riches. But specifically, other magical girls who are dying because of this. These witch hunts lead other girls to die. Girl, like, seriously. He is not on point, nor does he know really what he's talking about. He has the basic concepts wrong. 
technically, but he technically does have a point. And this is why I like the different story. There's this beneath the surface here. It's not just your typical, oh, we're the riches, we're bad, oh, we're the magical girls, we're good, oh, QB, I'm QB, I'm bad. I just smile, though. There are various shades of gray, man, various shades of gray in this story that people really haven't touched upon. I haven't seen anybody touch upon these, these shades of gray in this story. Some of these, I'm not going to tell you which, but some of these I have not discovered until now, as I'm reading it right now. It's just that deep of a story. It does not take one stance against another stance. There are no good guys in this story. There are none. Madoka is not good. She's just, she's just there. And she's a bit selfish too. Sayaka is not good. She's Sayaka. Mickey. Homura is Homura. Not good. Kyoko's not good. Mommy, we said it's not good. None of these people are good. Unless you want to talk about the real minor characters who have like no screen time, like Momo. I guess you could say Momo was Momo is good. The, the his, his, their mother is good. Maybe the guy with the violin, Kiyosuke was his name. I forgot. Ryosuke? I think it's Kiyosuke. I forgot. I forgot the dude's name. He's good. Got guys who who you aren't really looking into their lives in the first place to see how they really act. But when she starts seeing a person up close, when she starts analyzing any particular character in this story, they are not good. They are not at least entirely good. They are not conventionally good, like the typical hero or heroine would be. Again, they're not the Cecil. They're not the Goku. Even Goku wasn't entirely good, but I, I digress. They're not Superman. The old school Superman. They are not, I would defeat the forces of evil with my benevolent powers. Not that at all. Instead, what we have are a bunch of pricks and people who don't understand other people. And so they act like assholes and they act like jerks unintentionally. But they still do it. And they don't even try to think about the other side. Of course, that is the former. He's just a prick. She goes, well, it's cut off, but she goes, that's, that's not. And he goes, what's not? With your power, you can cut away the root of misfortune and sadness. If I were to lend my ear to such an insinuation, you may as well be... And this is to stop talking like a fucking bookworm. By tuperating me for being such a, a useless father. What are you... And this is it right here. I'll explain it, but I think I just saw it right there. If I don't see it in the notes, I'm going to say it. What are you doing now? Even without your father, you can bring salvation unto the world? You crush the faith of the people and lead them astray. Is that not the work of a laughing devil? You fail to even recognize what you have wrought, merrily telling tales of your exploits. So, is she a laughing devil, or is she someone who doesn't recognize what she's doing? Is she, is she being led astray by the powers that were granted to her by... The actual devil that she made the contract with? Dude's all over the fucking place. Or is she someone who just failed to recognize what she has brought, merely telling the tales of her exploits? What should I call you if not a rich? What do you call her? Your fucking daughter. Jackass. So, selfish circle logic. I've already <laughs> touched upon a bit of that here. The rest of it you probably gathered. This scene of her father who's discovered her secret isn't what breaks Kyoko though, but it's what begins to convince her that altruism as a magical girl, Mommy's notion, isn't worth it. Ironic here that Mommy doesn't really believe in that anyway. I mean, she, 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 again, she's forced to. She's forced herself to believe in the altruism of being a magical girl, either to make friends or to just carry on. It's not something that she would naturally adhere to. Ironically, riches hunt targets who are already ready to commit suicide. Suicide may not be ideal, but at least some freedom of choice in the berich is occasionally taken away, her father's indirect point. Now, what does this mean? We already sort of touched upon it with talking to mommy, but with your power, you can cut away the root of misfortune and sadness? You crushed the faith of the people. And that was a rhetorical question. He does not believe this. He's like, you really think you can cut away the root of misfortune and sadness with your power, your richest power? 
You crush the faith of the people and lead them astray. Is that not the work of a laughing devil? Now, this is circle logic because how does, how does she crush the faith of the people and lead them astray? Because he says so? What? That begs the question. How does she do that? He just says it. There's no real cause. That's just what she does. I guess. But there is some truth to this. Because... Someone who's saved from committing suicide isn't necessarily going to be eternally thankful and then lead a perfect life after that. If they were so far gone as to have wanted to commit suicide in their depression, you're bringing them back is just as likely to make them feel worse and maybe reattempt their their suicide than to not. And if they don't, that doesn't mean they suddenly feel good. What it means is they now have to manage with the fact that they're not dead. They have to manage it. They have to deal with that shit. You, can, you, you stop somebody from killing themselves? It's not automatically peaches and cream. That's not how life works. That's not how life works for people who aren't depressed. You have to work your way up to happiness. Whether it's intrinsic, how you feel internally, or it's something extrinsic, something material that you get that makes you feel happy. And that's the flaw with these magical girls. They think that, or rather, Mommy doesn't care. But Kyoko actually thinks that. Mommy doesn't necessarily think that, but she doesn't care. What makes her happy is what makes her happy. But for Kyoko, she, she's seriously naive enough to think that because she saved somebody from committing suicide. This, this is what she says at the start of the, of the scene. We don't see it, but because I cut it off. What she says is, don't be so depressed. Father, I saw I saved somebody from committing suicide today. Doesn't that make you happy? If you save somebody from committing suicide, you stop their end. But that doesn't stop the problem. That doesn't cut away the root of the problem. The problem is still there. So just because these guys save these people doesn't mean that they save them. Now, the real fallacy is that this bitch thinks that he can save them. When, when he can't, he's too selfish to even try. But the other fallacy is that Kyoko thinks that she's saving them for good too. She's just leaving them unconscious whenever they come to, and then assuming that whenever they come to, it's all gravy. Not necessarily the case. But the other part... You may as well vituperate me for being such a useless father. Just scold me, just chastise me for being a useless quote-unquote father. She said nothing of the sort, nor does she think anything of the sort, nor did, did she even imply it. Even without your father, you can bring salvation unto the world? This dude only cares about himself. He only cares about how he thinks he's viewed by his daughter, but not in an actual intimate way. He doesn't really care about what his daughter thinks of him unless it's good. He just wants to be put on a pedestal. That's this motherfucker's problem right here. He doesn't care about the people. He just wants to, with his power, cut away all the root of their misfortune and sadness. It's not about actually helping them. It's about is feeling good while doing so and there's a huge difference because helping somebody is not always going to make you feel good inside it will not sometimes that shit will drag you the fuck down and if your religion is strong enough of course you don't have to necessarily have a religion to be this type of person but if your religion is strong enough and i don't know what religion he belongs to but the one i belong to you're going to help somebody because it's not your feel it makes you feel good or it gives you a way to go on, you're not even helping them. It's just God, the higher being, acting through you, allowing you to do the higher calling. That's the only reason you're helping. Because it's not you helping. It's just you are an agent. 
You aren't, oh, I gotta make these people see the truth. I've gotta, they don't understand the word. They don't, no, your paths cross. And if they need help, you've been placed in the right position to offer your support. You've been given the power to offer your support. This is a very, very, very fucking hard philosophy to follow. But this is the ideal. This is the Jesus philosophy. This guy, what he is doing is the, is the complete opposite. You crush the faith of the people and lead them astray. So then, so then, if she hadn't have done that, what would have happened? Would they have come back to him at some point? This guy knows about witches now. He's calling her one, but he knows about witches now. So he should know that they were about to commit suicide. Or whatever the witches were going to do with them. Unless he thinks that the witches didn't have bad intentions for them, necessarily, any worse than what they were already going through. But then he shouldn't have had a problem with it anyway. But no. This guy says, well, if you weren't there then I would have been able to restore their faith and stray them back towards the path of righteousness. That's, that's not good. Because it's not about the right thing at that point. It's about him and what he wants to do. That's not selfless. The majority of the characters in this book, this manga, this story, whatever you call it, this narrative, they're selfish. They didn't come in a day either. She'll be fine. She was different from all the others. Okay, this brings up a question. Why, why isn't Sakura coming? Why hasn't Sakura decided to seek out Mommy for... The answer is obvious. Mommy, <laughs> she's seen that Mommy can't really relate to her situation. And she's going to say this verbatim. <laughs> pretty much verbatim. When they get into their little clash later on. But for right now, Kyoko doesn't want to go to Mommy because she doesn't think that mommy could do anything to rectify the situation or even help. So right now we're seeing mommy's worst fear come to fruition. Well, second worst fear, besides not being able to help anybody. And this fear is that she is, her friend is losing trust in her. Kyoko was losing trust in mommy and mommy had wanted, it wouldn't have been so nice if they could have trusted each other with their lives. They're not even close at this point because Kyoko can't trust Mommy as a source of advice. Another flashback, why won't you understand? And at least they changed up the, the font here. It's not just the riches that attack people, the familiars do too. Stop right there, turn your logic around. If you went about this your way, says the dumb magical girl, and if by chance you failed to get a grief seed, can we blame you for that? I mean, with Mommy, it doesn't really matter. She can, can sustain herself, but these guys can't. Familiars develop into riches, so I don't think we have a choice but to turn a blind eye to the few casualties they cause. It's not like we can find riches that easily anyway. And I'm giving them that suave villain voice because, <laughs> I don't know. They, they might have, like, in their mind, it might be like, we can't do anything about it. I, I wish we could, but we can't. But their tone... And not their tone, but their word choice is making it seem like they're just assholes. I think it's wonderful that you want to save as many people as you can by yourself, but... Let me just get to the end. Oh, well. But fuck you. That's, that's what they said. <laughs> I don't have the rest of it. But like, this is like, I think it's wonderful that patronizing. Can you blame you for that? Sarcasm. Turn your logic around. Stop right there. That's just being a prick. So these guys right here, the both of them... One and two, they suck. <laughs> and I'm gonna mock them. Emphasizes that Kyoko was helping mommy destroy familiars as well as riches. This is your proof right here. Because Kyoko was different from them. This is the context of the flashback. She was different from all the others. She went and hunted familiars. We saw her hunting familiars along with mommy. And these guys, turn your logic around. So yeah, mommy knows <laughs> what the difference is pretty clearly. It'd been days since their last talk that she spoke to Mommy. It had been days since her and Kyoko's last talk. Mommy's self-sacrificial guilt emphasized again to others and her 
detriment. She's forced to, her own guilt is trapping her in this, I have to get a cough drop. I have to act like this sort of heroine who goes above and beyond. And she endangers others by doing this, if they choose to stick with her and do this. And otherwise, they don't stick with her. Now there is something to note about what's going on right now, but I hopefully I, I put that in there. I'll point it out when I find it. If I find it, if I don't, then I'm going to say it. Later that day, I wonder what happened to Sakura-san, Mommy thinks. I don't know if I'd be able to cheer her up, but there should be something I can do. We can't spend all our time fighting. Riches, she means. We need some rest and relaxation too. It might be nice if we cooked or made sweets together. And then she sneezes right here. It's gotten quite chilly, she thinks. It'd be great if we could eat something warm together. Mommy sneezes while thinking of Kyoko, which indicates Kyoko, as Japanese superstition goes, is thinking about her. I think that that's Japanese superstition. It might be some other culture. It might be more than one culture. Wow, that could, that's a shocker if that's the case. As of now, you and I fight for the same reason, don't we? I think the two of us really could defeat it. Let's protect the city together. A whole bunch of flashbacks. Hubie. Sakura-san, she, never mind. I've got to do my best today, too. Even if I'm alone. Okay. Ah, uh, the clock equals time. There's a clock, uh, right here. It's cut off, but it, it indicates the passage of time. And one of the few hints they give us in this shit. <laughs> As to where we are sequence-wise. But it's okay. You gotta read it two times anyway to really get it. Kyoko has been missing for at least several days, but reluctantly fights on. She would have been doing this anyway, even if she'd never met Kyoko. I'm sorry, Mommy reluctantly fights on. I'm being lazy here. Mommy reluctantly fights on, and she would have been doing this anyway, even if she'd never met Kyoko. It would have really killed me to put four letters in there. But this shows how strong her guilt is. Her guilt is much stronger than Kyoko's presence. We've already seen this when she was like, I can't agree with that point of view of, of sparing the riches or letting someone be taken by a rich if they really want to. Her morals... Her ideals are what's keeping her alive. So even if they don't satisfy her, like life support might not be enjoyable compared to hanging out with a friend. <laughs> if you're in that room of life support alone, well, it's the only thing keeping you alive. And her skepticism, she doesn't even try to look for Kyoko because she's assuming Kyoko no longer wants her company. There it is. That's what I was looking for. All these days, she goes throughout her life worrying about Kyoko. Wondering where Kyoko is, thinking of Kyoko, but she never actively looks for Kyoko. Let's be real, if Mommy looked for Kyoko and told Kyoko exactly how she felt, Kyoko and Mommy would have bonded pretty much instantly. But the reason she doesn't do this is because she's too worried that Kyoko has already ran away from her. She doesn't think that Kyoko wants to be around her. Maybe it's something she said before. Maybe it was when they disagreed, when Kyoko had that problem. Mommy didn't really offer a solution. She just said what she felt, what she wanted to do. So Mommy's thinking that Kyoko's not coming back. Kyoko is what she was going to say. Sakura-san, she, she left me. There's something along those lines. She's, she's not coming back. Mommy's crying because she knows she's alone now. She knows Kyoko's not coming back. But she knows that she has to go on anyway. On to the next news item. Last night before dawn, a private residence in ha Hasamino City? I can't really see it. In Prefecture. I guess that's supposed to be modeled after a real place, so they just censored it. Caught on fire, according to reports from nearby residents. Firefighters rushed to the scene and were able to quickly extinguish the fire, but one section of the building had burned down. Three bodies were discovered in the residence, all belonging to the members of the family that lived there. The bodies were identified as the members of the Sakura family. The tragic news doesn't phase Mommy until Kyoko's family is mentioned. Now why is that? We, we see it. We see it right here. Mommy does not give a shit until the Sakura family. Then her eyes open. Before that, she's just walking along. Got another grief seat. She's alive. There are some reasons. General depression over Kyoko. She's so depressed she's not really thinking about what she's hearing and she might not be hearing it. Well, that's a lie because she heard Sakura family. But she's not really thinking about it because the Kyoko thing outweighs everything else on her mind right now. Her factual pessimism and selfishness. Now, I think it's both of these. I think it's both of these because, uh, well, she knows how people are. Look at them. Same way. 
They aren't listening. This this is a newscast. Everybody should be able to hear this. It's playing from loudspeakers. Everybody in this area, at least those who are near mommy, should be able to respond to this, but they are not responding to this. Why aren't they responding to this? Because it doesn't reach them. They don't care. Or at least they don't care enough to react. They just go about their day looking completely out of touch. Most of them probably have someone to be out of touch with. Mommy has to be out of touch alone by herself. So she knows people are like this. So she knows it doesn't really matter. Whatever happened already happened. She couldn't save them. So it sucks. I got a grief seed and I, and they died. What's the point of this? I did what I could and it didn't matter. Remember, riches cannot possess people without some kind of signal. If mommy did not see a witch there, then as it was out of her hands. And that's her thought of it. People just suck and people did something very stupid or they just died. And I suck for not being able to save them, but that's it. I can only do what I can do. I was stupid for relying on the power of a miracle. All I did was wreck my family. A power that can't protect the single thing I truly hold dear is useless to me. It's just like father said, as of now, there is no difference between me and a witch. And QB's like, yes, let's hope not. Apparently the people who are saved by her father's word are meaningless to her. Yeah, because all those guys who were saved, it's not like they went back to before when, when the uh, father died and everybody else in her family died, wife and Momo. Now it's, they're not even worth bringing up. They're not even worth mentioning because she lost what she holds dear, her family. I'm not saying that her family is something she shouldn't care about. I'm not saying her family isn't something she should prioritize over those other people. But she didn't, they weren't worth referencing to her. Because her wish, she only made it because it was useful to her. And now it's useless. And now her grief seed is about to turn pitch black. This attitude dictates Kyoko's mindset from now on. And therefore, the racial fight. She subconsciously represses her magical abilities. As soon as she says, the power is useless to me. QB, if I stop hunting riches, will I be able to die like the rest of them? QB's like, push your luck. That was a joke, obviously. She doesn't know what QB's real intentions are, but QB's not responding, which to her means that he's concerned, which she's not. Her soul gem almost empties, as I said and showed, but her selfishness saves her life like mommy's. The only thing keeping Kyoko going on now is that she's going to live for herself now. She doesn't give a fuck about anything, but she doesn't want to die, so she's just going to live. Her selfishness isn't the same as, as mommy's, but it is from a similar source. She cares about herself. She cares about her happiness above all else. Then she gets in a fight. What's going on? I can't fight the way I want to. This hasn't ever happened before. She's hunting riches, mind you. She's not defending herself against one or being attacked by one or just by circumstances that she just ends up fighting a witch. She's looking for them to fight. Why? Why can't I remember how to use my magic? And seeing that she's looking for a fight as soon as she goes through this, that was a joke, obviously. Will I be able to die like the rest of them if I stop hunting riches? Seems like she's revenge hunting. Doesn't really have anything to do with what her father did, which was get the other two to commit suicide, probably force them to, and then burn the house down before killing himself. But she needs something to take it out on. Why can't I remember how to use my magic? She's hit. But her selfishness almost cost her life in other ways. It's because you said you didn't need it. The power that resulted from your wish was enchantment aka illusion. Her life was enchanted by an illusion. It was just window dressing put up over her life. Her real life before all the magic shit was not like this. It was the complete opposite. So she's living a lie basically is what her magic is. It looks like you subconsciously rejected your own wish. The type of magic bestowed onto a magical girl is directly related to the contents of the wish she was granted. As long as you remain without your magic, You'll be at a severe disadvantage in your fights from here on. 
I'm doing this on purpose with the tone, by the way. <laughs> That's it. Serves me right. And she continues to reject her magic. There's no salvation for me. I became a magical girl because I wanted to protect father and my whole family. Look at the mess I'm in. I can't even protect myself. And then we see what, what's going on right now. I'm going to explain it, but there is some stuff going on. Mommy tracks down and arrives to defeat the witch within a single panel. Right, right here. She defeats it before Kyoko's even finished her sentence and replenishes Kyoko's soul gem with the grief seed she'd been holding during the newscast when she was walking down with that scarf around her neck down the street. So, mommy is strong, okay? That's it. <laughs> She's strong. <laughs> Very strong, but she also still has her magic, so that's something to consider. But she, she, she's stronger than Kyoko regardless, obviously. Oh, that priest who's been giving those weird sermons lately? It's just another new religion that harasses bystanders. Just avoid it. Oh, Nei-chan, I'm hungry. It'll be okay, Momo. Father's teachings are going to reach everyone. When that happens, you'll be able to eat as much as we want. Instead of getting a fucking job and prioritizing your family, you postulate your religion in front of everybody and expose your family to everybody's remarks. For what? Why do you... Just because you have a religion doesn't mean you automatically have to spread it. Most everybody has some sort of religion. Even atheists. A lot of... A I would say the majority of atheists out there have a sort of religion. Religion does not mean a belief in God. And I have no idea what this guy's religion is, but it, it sucks. And they can suck. But... It can also be a, a good thing. It can make you want to support your fucking family. I don't get why I, why this guy is so against doing this shit part-time. Uh, until then, just make do with this. An apple! Kyoko's words have to be on Momo's side and vice versa. <laughs> I got it in secret. I'm not even going to ask how she got that. It does not look like it was a pleasant thing. Oh my. Did somebody give it to you? In that case, Mother will cut it up for you. I still have no idea how they had that fucking church, and they can't even afford food. But whatever. Hard to side with the father at all in his flashback. Especially, I don't know, I don't know his religion. I, I can't even give him any sort of, anything but criticism, because I don't know his religion. I don't know anything about him, except he's dumb. And he strives for that religion so harsh that he sacrifices his family, basically. He sacrifices them and doesn't even see it. He does not see it, and if he saw it, he wouldn't care. Kyoko's a bit more practical than her father. Yes, she, she is. She knows how to get food. I can't necessarily say that it's a good way she gets food, but she gets food. I'm glad you're safe, says Mommy. I hadn't seen you in so long that I was worried. Sorry, Mommy-san. I can't keep. And her grief seat is getting darker. I'm sorry. It must have hurt being all alone. I'm a failure as your senpai. I should have come rushing to find you right away. Thank goodness that at least you're alive. And Kyoko doesn't cry, but she damn near cries. Now, it's, it's funny how much she cares about her father as well. Not just her, the rest of her family, but her father dying. I mean, this guy was too fucking cheap to get the family food. And left them starving while Kyoko had to Kyoko had to scrounge for the family, or at least for Momo, and avoid herself. Because not enough for both sisters. And I'm guessing the mother did everything else, but what did, what did dad do? What did dad beat dad do? He didn't do shit. Kyoko's soul gem shows he's still nearly suicidal, as mommy will be when Kyoko tries to save her. What I mean by still nearly suicidal is she's giving up on life. She's giving up on life and she's going to become a witch if this ends up happening, if this ends up happening the way it's happening right now, with her soul gem turning black. Kyoko attempts to tell mommy, and she, she doesn't know that when your soul gem turns black you become a witch. She doesn't know that you die when your soul gem turns black, but she's still suicidal. Doesn't change the fact that she is suicidal. All those hormones are messing up her body. All those negative thoughts are messing up her body. Just like, uh alcohol I guess if you don't know what alcohol does in the in detail it's messing up her mind and she's feeding it constantly 
at this point. Kyoko attempts to tell Mommy she literally can't fight anymore. Mommy interrupts, saying she's glad Kyoko's alive for personal reasons, because now she has someone once again. Not about Kyoko, about her. Isn't the parallelism nice? Kyoko interrupted Mommy to talk about her happiness. Now Mommy's interrupting Kyoko to talk about her happiness. But the thing is, even though Mommy's stuff seems a bit more noble, it's still the same selfishness. She doesn't really care about how Kyoko feels. She cares about the fact that she can be with Kyoko and feel comfortable with Kyoko. That can make her feel better. And Kyoko cares about her dad and doesn't care about how her dad feels. Even though her, her dad sucks, but we'll just throw that aside. Another example, she doesn't care about how Mommy feels when Mommy's explaining herself. Even though what Kyoko said about her dad was a noble thing. Nobility all around, yet rooted in selfishness. That's what this is right here. It's all my fault. I let everyone die. And when Mommy says, I'm glad you're alive, thank goodness you're alive. Kyoko has that survivor's guilt. And Mommy understands that because she has the same survivor's guilt. So she's crying too because she can empathize with Kyoko, but she doesn't understand exactly what Kyoko's, what did I say? Reaction is to her serious loss, how that's going to be very different from Mommy's reaction. It'll be selfish, all right, but it'll be a very different kind of selfishness. Then Mommy offers tea. I believe it was ginger tea. And Mommy says, I think it'll warm you up. Thanks for the change of clothes, too. Sorry for being a bother. Don't be. It's late. Why don't you spend the night here? <laughs> she says, don't be. She's not even... At this point, she's not even trying. She knows she's, she's just indulging Kyoko. She's not trying to be polite. She reinforces that Kyoko is being a bother. I mean, she's not trying to be rude. But she's not thinking about how Kyoko might be... How just worn down all of this is making her feel. She, she's failed. She's fucking failed. Her family has died. Her wrist was useless. She almost died. She lost her powers. And now she's being coddled again. After having run away from the person who's coddling her now. And she apologizes when that is not becoming of her at all. I mean, she's not, she's not a, an asshole at this point, but she's, it, she's uncomfortable in this situation. But she says sorry. She musters up a sorry in the midst of all this just turmoil going on in her, her head, her mind, her heart. And mommy's don't be. Because I want this. It's late, so why don't you spend the night here? So, Sakura-san. What are you going to do now? Coming from me, this might seem a bit meddlesome, but if you'd be fine with it, do you want to stay here until things settle down? No, thanks. I appreciate the thought, but I'd rather not. I can't cause you that much trouble. All right. As long as you have something in mind. And Kyoko doesn't have anything in mind, but, but what we see from Kyoko is, is that she... She's about to go off on her own, and she, more importantly, feels, despite that worry, she feels she just doesn't, she she can't find any alternative, and she doesn't want to. She does not want to keep staying in the nest, in Mommy's nest. Because this is what, M Mommy is Mama Bird to her right now. Mommy, mommy is, well, that's Mommy for you. That's where her name is what it is. But Mommy is making Kyoko feel pathetic. Meanwhile, on mommy's side, she is trying to push her luck and she does not care that, well, she, she, she acknowledges that it might be meddlesome considering what Kyoko has just gone through, but she doesn't care enough to not try and ease Kyoko back towards her. The I still takes priority. What she wants is still number one. Mommy is a flawed character. <laughs> In a way, she's being extremely selfish here, probably because they're two of a kind now. Yes, Mommy does know that they are two of a kind. That is a, that is true. But Mommy doesn't try to, she doesn't, she doesn't try to talk about it at all. She just, she just knows that Kyoko's here now, so I'm going to catch her. I got her now. Now I want her to stay with me. Maybe later they can talk about it, but right now, I just want to make sure she stays with me first. 
And you could say, well, maybe she, that's just how she tries to... How she tries to... No, because in the manga, she says outright what she wants to do. She wants to be with Kyoko. Because she is lonely herself. Not because she feels Kyoko could use a friend. That's completely different. Feeling that Milwo Kyoko is down, her, down on her luck right now, to say the least. So she could use some support. I want to be there for her. That is a, an entirely different scenario than what is being presented right here. What Mommy is actually thinking is that, well, maybe now she'll really want to not leave me because we both lost family. So we need each other. She won't want to leave me now. Please don't do anything reckless by yourself from now on. I can support you when it comes to battle, so let's keep at it together, okay? I know it's late, but I'm going to make a simple dinner. Take it with you. Okay. Sorry, Mami-san. I can't keep fighting alongside you. And you see her clutch her father's pen at her chest. The man who told her she was living the life of a lie and she believes it now. She doesn't want that life. That, that noble life, it brought her nothing. And that's all she has to remember him by. I mean, honestly, right? When you look at mommy's character right here, when you see what she's doing right here, please don't do anything reckless by yourself from now on. I can support you when it comes to battle, so let's keep at it together, okay? What she's saying is, okay, if you really don't want to stay, that's fine, but can we at least keep being partners? And in the meantime, she says that Kyoko is reckless and implies that she's weak too. Specifically when she's alone and doesn't have mommy for support. This is not lost on Kyoko. Mommy is not trying to be a mean or rude or an inconsiderate person, but she is right now. She most definitely is being that person. But to Kyoko, it doesn't matter. She knows she's too weak in more ways than one, but ironic that she's too short-sighted to see Mommy's own weakness. And this is what really, this is what really, I don't want to say it chaps my hide or something like that, but there are a lot of, maybe it's my hindsight bias here, but I think there were a lot of opportunities through which these guys could have realized, hey, we're actually not on different ends of the spectrum here. We're on the same side here. The selfish side. We care about each other, what we want. I mean, not each other, ourselves. We care about ourselves, what we want. We care about what benefits us. Kyoko wants what benefits her. Mommy wants what benefits her. And you might say, well, I'm sorry to keep discrediting you and all this stuff, but you, you might say, or somebody like you might say, maybe your neighbor, maybe the person in the same room as you who isn't you, or maybe that the, the ghost in your room might say, well, Kyoko, I, I get what you're saying, Rebel, but Kyoko here knows she's weak. She knows she's boisterous and annoying and useless, like the car beside you right now. And she's pulling off. That's why she wants to pull off like that car. Now, granted, it's a Honda, but even though it's a Honda, that doesn't take away from the fact that it's fucking annoying. Just like with Kyoko. She's still a partner for now, but that doesn't take away from the fact that she's fucking annoying. So what what should she feel? Should she not feel useless? She knows she is. Row one. Uh, yes. Drive what you want. Don't feel useless, even if you are. <laughs> but but two, the the... Seriously, okay. Kyoko was too pressed, okay? Kyoko, 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 she gave too much of a shit. Kyoko gave too much of a shit about what mommy might have thought about her. And the other people around her. It, well, for that case, her father. She gave too much of a shit about other people's perception of her. Mommy did not care. Mommy just wanted to hook somebody in so that they could be her friends, so that they could, they could give her company. That's all mommy wanted. Kyoko really cared. She was very, very very weak when it came to self-esteem and so if she if she gets in that situation with mommy this is what mommy would say mommy would say calm the fuck down i don't care about that student teacher shit i don't care about how strong you think you are not or are i don't care about who knows what who doesn't know what i don't care about ways of fighting all that shit as long as you're with me and you're fighting witches as a matter of fact, I don't, she wouldn't even say that. No, towards the end of the manga, she wouldn't even say that. It's, it's literally not about ways of fighting. 
Even if you want to just go ahead and hunt riches and avoid familiars. I won't agree with you, but you don't, it doesn't mean we have to leave each other. Let's just stay and be friends. Fuck all the other shit. Who cares? Who cares who's stronger? Who cares who knows what? If you want to, if you want me to teach you some more, I'll teach you some more. If you don't, then whatever. If you want to not fight riches at all, whatever. Just don't leave me. She would say that. Because she knows that at the very least, Kyoko is grieving. And sometimes this is what it takes. People who are, are, are grieving, they might be selfish. And in a lot of cases, sure, just put up with it. You're allowed to let them be selfish. They're allowed to be selfish. They're going through some shit. Now, there are limits to this, of course. But if you are an empathetic person, then you'll, you'll have some limits that are high. You won't just be, fuck it, I won't let you, you're being rude. You're mean. You'll establish some limits somewhere. You'll have boundaries that they can go to. And it doesn't matter, really, because mommy knows that she can take out all the fucking riches. It doesn't fucking matter what rich is familiar. She can fight them all. She'd already done it. So it's not a case of, oh, I need you to help me, your philosophy and mine. We have to do it together. No, just be my fucking friend. That's all I want is a fucking friend. That's all she wants is a fucking friend. She does not want anything more. But Kyoko doesn't get it. And she doesn't give mommy a chance to explain it, and mommy wouldn't explain it. Because mommy didn't want to be viewed as selfish. She saw how selfish Kyoko was being, but in her mind, she had to be better than that. And in her mind, if Kyoko saw, this isn't, this isn't the person I want to hang out with, this isn't the inspiration I was looking up to, then... I'm, I'm out of here. I don't want to deal with you anymore. You're just as scummy as I am. Now, later on, when Mommy's, like, on her deathbed or whatever the fuck it is, like, way later in this in this story, it ends up being, I don't give a fucking, I don't care what you think. I'm just telling you how I feel. This is how I feel. I don't, I don't give a fuck if you think I'm a scumbag or not. I know I am. I just want you to hang out with me. I just want you to be my friend. No one else would be my friend, no matter how nice I was. So why does it fucking matter anymore? These facades are stupid. That's how mommy ends up acting with her usual her usual polite tone. But besides that, she says it exactly like I'm saying it. That's when she stops caring about how Kyoko might have felt. She's just telling Kyoko how she felt all along. And then later on, they go out again. I don't know why Kyoko goes out again when she says I can't fight with you anymore. I think she means that more so physically. Like, I'm going to continue to be a liability. I don't think she means that I really, I do not willfully want to fight with you anymore. So they go and fight. Kyoko gets beat up. Mommy's not hurt. Mommy heals Kyoko. With her own soul gem. Mommy heals Kyoko. This is the equivalent of using your own life energy to heal another person. I guess the closest approximation in real life would be running into a burning building to save somebody or or swimming into a, a high rapid river or I don't know something like rushing into a, a building that's about to collapse or going into a fight or someone has a weapon or someone has a gun and trying to save somebody who I don't know, some, something like that she is trying to save Kyoko at the risk of her own life now does she know it's her own life no she doesn't know what these things are she doesn't know exactly how soul gems operate but this is what she's doing here this is her energy and they know that stuff is still valuable you're not feeling any better, Mommy says. This is going to sound harsh, but you're fighting with your life on the line. You have to fight as hard as you can every time. Kyoko's out of it. Mommy is seriously selfish here, man. She, she's seriously selfish. Kyoko says that she can't fight anymore, but she continues to try to fight. And what Mommy says, okay, of course, Mommy doesn't hear Kyoko saying this, but she, she pr should pretty much know what is going on in Kyoko's mind, that she's just out of it. After all that's happened to her, and she says, you're not feeling any better. She knows exactly how Kyoko's feeling after what happened to her. Obviously not good. She's feeling terrible. I just, I just imagine going through what Kyoko went through. Not only that, that your family died, but that you were trying to do good and that got them killed. After you were scolded. And mommy understands that whatever happened wasn't a good thing. She doesn't know the details, but she knows that Kyoko lost her family. And she says, you're not feeling any better. I understand. 
but you need to fight as hard as you can every time, just like I do, because I'm just I'm the same as you. She's viewing her her issue is that she's viewing Kyoko in a black and white. That's not how people work. They're not going to react to situations exactly the same. They are going to be different at times. So whereas mommy can, in a word, manipulate Kyoko and get by with that, Kyoko, who is being manipulated, is not going to necessarily say, oh, at least I'm with you, mommy, so I can just keep on fighting. I'll fight it hard every time. No. That's selfish to even assume that. And that's boosting yourself up just a little bit too much. Instead, what Kyoko thinks, I can't even hope to match the tenacity of this girl. And she can't. Because Mommy has what she wants and Kyoko does not. But Mommy keeps wanting to Kyoko's detriment. So what I was saying was she's essentially taking Kyoko's circumstance to just mean that they have more in common now. She's looking at the bright side she can find for her own sake. And she's almost telling Kyoko to get over her family dying and, and fight on right here. Like she's only saying, well she's not saying it, but she's more or less saying that, okay, we're in the same position now. But we have each other, right? Like I just said, Kyoko is not going to necessarily say, yeah, you're right, I have you, mommy. I have you, senpai. So I can fight on day after day after day, as hard as you're fighting. Now, now granted, mommy isn't making Kyoko go out. I don't think because she said or, earlier on, she said, no, she didn't. No, she said, she said, let's keep at it together. Okay. So the intention, if they're not already doing this right now, is that mommy is pushing Kyoko as hard as mommy pushes herself right after Kyoko's loss. Whereas, even with Mommy, she gave herself time to figure out what she wanted in life. She's not even giving Kyoko this chance. She's just immediately thrusting Kyoko into the same regimen that she's been doing, that Mommy's been doing for months, with no break, with nothing. That's at least the intention. Mommy has no regard for Kyoko, I'm sorry. She just, she just does not. And she assumes that what she's used to, what she's allowed herself to get used to, it's exactly what Kyoko wants. And that's just fucked 101. Meanwhile, Kyoko hasn't been trying because she doesn't care anymore to keep fighting extra hard for the sake of everyone. That not caring has literally limited her powers as well. What else can I say? It's true. She literally can't use her magic because she doesn't care anymore. She's already lost what's, what's near and dear to her. And you can go ahead and say, well, she's just being moody. She's just being a bitch. And from a certain point of view, you're right because these are other people's lives on the line. But at the same time, mommy doesn't really give a shit either. She just wants Kyoko to be with her. So it's not, it's not even about the people. It's about what each of them want individually. And what they want is their happiness. They want their own self-satisfaction, again. So they're both the bitch. When I first saw this, I thought, man, mommy's just, she's trying to toughen Kyoko up, but she's, she doesn't, she's not empathizing as much as she could be, but she's put in a tough situation because Life is still going on, and she wants to support Kyoko, but they have to keep fighting. Like, if, if not, Kyoko is going to get hurt if she doesn't take it seriously. So she has to tell Kyoko, even though she knows Kyoko is going through a lot, that she has to watch out for herself, because otherwise Kyoko might get hurt, and mommy might not be there. And It's not about that. It's not about that. That one was a familiar, so you got away without any bad runes, but damn, fucking familiar did that to her. If you're enchantment magic, shouldn't you have been able to avoid injury altogether? Why won't you use it? And Kyoko was getting upset just hearing that. Wait, Sakura-san. It's not just a matter of merely defeating them. You know, now's a good time. I've wanted to tell you something for a while. Now, she's going to rip into Mommy right now, but it's important to realize. I'm not going to say this again. At least not, not immediately. It's important to realize that She's ripping into mommy, but she still doesn't know how selfish mommy's being. So she's really just, like, scapegoating mommy. Like, using mommy as an excuse to go ahead and, and, and do what she wants to do. <laughs> she's really going to attack mommy's beliefs. But she doesn't actually attack mommy. When I mean, she could be attacking mommy if she understood how mommy was behaving. She would be well within her rights to attack mommy. I mean, not physically, because she would, she would, but she would, she would die. But she would be, she would be well within her rights to insult mommy because mommy deserves it. 
She really does. And when mommy says, it's not just a matter of merely defeating them, mommy was likely going to say it's also a matter of conserving your energy as much as possible, which as we find out later on, or if you've already seen the anime or the manga, or the, manga the soul gem, your energy is very necessary to your survival. You need to conserve that. But Kyoko's illusion magic reminds her of the certain type of wish she made. Her illusion magic is something that, well, I already, I already said it. Her dad is was living a lie. He called her out on this. They all died except for her. And now she has nothing. Because she gave all her happiness away to him. A dude who quite honestly didn't deserve it. If you're going to make a selfish wish, you should make a selfish wish about you, your mom, and your sister being happy and the fuck this guy. Sorry. But then you wouldn't have to deal with the bad apple spoiling the rest of the bunch. Instead, she lost everything by giving a guy who hated lies a lie. An illusion. Illusion. <laughs> now what? Now she's being told this again by mommy. Shouldn't you use your illusion magic? With your, I mean, I'm sorry, your enchantment magic. We're enchanting. Kyoko's like, shut the fuck up. Just fucking don't say that fucking shit. <laughs> and now mommy doesn't understand it. Because mommy doesn't understand that this was the source of her pain. I'm sure if she thought hard enough, she could have thought back to what Kyoko was saying when they were having that conversation at the table, that hypothetical conversation. Would it have been better to just let somebody, instead of finding out that you were saving them, to have suffered because if you save them, then they might not be grateful, their lives might be worse, all that stuff. Mommy might have been, been able to piece together, well, these were suicides, so maybe it was a rich, but maybe it wasn't a rich. Maybe it was one of them, and it had something to do with this illusion. But, no, she doesn't do this. She doesn't do this, even though she knows that Kyoko made her wish to give her destitute father some sort of happiness. I'm not saying that mommy should have understood this, but think about the perspectives, is all I'm trying to say. If you're writing, and if you want to make a character seem smart, and not that they have a, I'm not saying mom, mommy's not dumb. Of course, she's not dumb. She's not anywhere close to dumb, okay? But if you want to make her seem, if you want to make your character seem smart in, the, in that moment, in that circumstance, because this was a dumb moment for mommy, then what you have to do is this. Have them see all the angles before they start running their mouths or making actions. Now, I'm not sure exactly how deep Mommy was thinking into this situation with Kyoko. But from what we saw, what we saw was that Mommy was not thinking about this when we saw her. We saw Mommy thinking about, where is Kyoko? She might not like me anymore. She doesn't like me anymore. I'm all alone now. And I guess there was some... When she comes back, I'll break some sweets with her or whatever. And, but she, not what could have driven her away. Seriously, what's going on with her? Is there something with her family? Is it, should I look into this? Regarding our battle plans from now on, rather than defeating both riches and familiars, why don't we just focus on the riches? If we hunt familiars, which don't even drop grief seeds, all we're doing is wasting magical energy. What's the matter, Sakura? So I don't know about saving the city or fighting for justice or anything. To be honest, this is getting to be a pain putting up with your obsessions. Why is Kyoko acting this way? Let's see if I say it. Mommy's reaction is credible, but Kyoko indicates her mental state even more. Yes, they're fighting familiars, which Kyo- And when I say credible, I mean it's believable in that. Why is Kyoko acting this way? Why is Kyoko- Why is Kyoko- Even without the familiar shit, it's- She's, she's just got up and she's acting all weird. <laughs> you see her? She's weird. Look at those eyes. You, you see what I'm saying, right? Yes, they're fighting familiars, which Kyoko doesn't want to do for obvious reasons, but she starts this right after Mommy's finished using her energy to heal her. This random shit in saying, putting up with your obsessions. So why is Kyoko doing this? What are the obvious reasons? Well, one, she doesn't want to die. Just dying. <laughs> The soul gem is what it really is, but just dying. Like, she doesn't want to be killed. And she wants to burden mommy less. 
That's why she wants this new plan. Because if she's just fighting the riches, getting her way, then she'll be expending less energy. And then the familiars won't be fucking her up because she can't handle the, the heat in mommy's kitchen. But it's too embarrassing to admit either compared to targeting mommy's morals as opposed to mommy herself. So so what she does, instead of saying that she's, okay, mommy, let me, let me, let me be scared with you right now. I'm, I'm weak. I don't have my magic. And I'm, I'm a Kohai still. I'm still a Kohai. So I just I can't do this. Can we scale it back a little bit? Can can I fight with you every Tuesday or something like this? Can we maybe you hunt the familiars and I, I jo join in with the riches or something and all this other stuff that you've been doing for me? I mean, I, you plus you're giving me your energy. I just I'm, I'm feeling like a bit of a liability here. That'd be too embarrassing to say. Kyoko doesn't want to say this because Kyoko's already been indulged so much that she, if she just admits that she's a Rini and that mommy needs to coddle her even more and still continue to use her support, that's out of the question. <laughs> so what Kyoko's going to say instead is she's going to just completely round about, well, your morals are fucked up. You, this is no reason for you to be doing this because they're going to end up being riches anyway and you're just wasting energy. Why, why are we even doing this? This is why I got hurt. Because you want us to fight these fucking familiars. Why don't we just fight the riches? We're just wasting energy if we don't only fight the riches. But it's more to it than this. Which I didn't say here. The way Kyoko acts, she's acting this way. Because she knows that she's either going to get her way. And continue to stay with mommy. Or mommy's going to leave her. Either way, she's not going to be a burden. She's consciously ranting at mommy. And I'm not, I'm saying consciously because she's not losing herself because otherwise she'd be attacking mommy. And how mommy, why you keep making me fight these fucking riches? What the fuck is wrong with you? She's attacking mommy's morals because she can't bring, she can't bring herself to attack mommy. But she's planning this so that mommy gets fed up with her because she thinks she deserves this for being a, for being such a fucking lump. And if mommy decides to stay with her, then so be it. I guess mommy sees my point of view then. It's pointless defeating the small fry when we don't get anything out of it. I guess this sort of thing just doesn't go with me, you know? What are you saying? And mommy's sweating here. Rich or familiar, it doesn't matter. If they aren't dealt with, people will die. If you don't defeat them, I'm telling you, it's impossible to save everyone. Mommy is just silent. Whether they're possessed by a rich or not, People who want to die will die. Do we really have to put our lives on the line to save them? We ought to let familiars eat them so they can turn into material for grief seeds. Which means that when the riches kill these people, as the, as the familiars become riches, when they kill these people, then the riches will be killed and they'll get the grief seeds. The food chain effect, I guess is what they would call it, is what Kyoko calls it. I think in the anime she specifically calls it that. Sakura-san. I understand how you feel about what happened with your family, but saying things like that, what the hell do you understand? Losing your family in a traffic accident is completely different from being the cause of your family's death. And she means this right here. This is no longer scripted. And now mommy sees that even though she understands, they're not the same. And she was repressing it, but she knew that they weren't the same. They weren't the same case, and they weren't the same individual. It's just like you said, from the beginning I should have made a risk for myself. That way I would have been the only one to get hurt. Because I pushed my own selfish form of happiness on them without thinking of their desires, my entire family got caught up in my misfortune too. It serves me right. My magic caused all of it. Deep within you, you're thinking this was the obvious outcome, aren't you? Obviously, Kyoko's just venting, mostly about her father, so, so, <laughs> where he want the proof? Whether they're possessed by a rich or not, people who want to die will die. Do we really have to put our lives on the line to save them? We ought to let familiars eat them, so they can t <clears throat> So yes, this is about her father. She's, she's gotten unusually angry at this point. Probably angrier than she's going to be for the rest of this, the, uh, book. I don't remember. But around there, and the funny thing is, she still loves her father. So she's just talking shit right now. But, like I said, she doesn't mean slash really care about most of what she's saying regarding the familiars. What truly concerns her is how she stated her risk was selfish and led to her family's death. But she misunderstands what mommy is saying. Now, what do I mean by the former? What do I mean about what truly concerns her? She does not care about whether the people live or die. 
If she needs to kill a familiar, she's gonna kill a familiar. But what matters to her is that her wrist was selfish, so she's going to live selfishly now because there's no point in since her wrist was selfish and she's already gone out, down that path and it led her astray, it led her into misfortune, trying to turn it around. To her, she's already lost everything. So whatever suits her, suits her. If it suits her to kill a familiar, she kills a familiar. If it don't suit her to kill a familiar, Really spare. They'll die again later on as a rich, I guess, <laughs> unless somebody else gets them or they or they don't get got. It's really simple logic from a grieving girl, and mommy deals with her grief in a much more complex way. It's it's simple when you have it explained to you, but reading this right here, reading this story, it's harder to understand how mommy's dealing with her grief compared to Kyoko, who's just acting out. Even though Kyoko is acting out to bait mommy, it's not as gray as what mommy is doing. It's still all I care about is myself, and if you want to come with me, then fine, but I'm still going to have it my way, and if not, then whatever, I'm still going to have it my way. Because if I'm with you, I'm only holding you back, and that makes me feel bad. That's Kyoko in a nutshell. Well, a bit more to her than that, but in a nutshell, that's what she is. Mommy, you can't just say what she is in a nutshell, even now. Whether Kyoko's and Mommy's interactions or not, Mommy is a more complex character than Kyoko is. So what is mommy's reaction to deep within you? You're thinking that this was the obvious outcome, aren't you? R regarding Kyoko talking about, well, I should have made my, well, this is what she thinks that mommy is, is saying about her. You should have made your own wish for yourself instead of for, for your father. And since I didn't do that, since I didn't make my own wish about that, this is the obvious outcome you were saying, right? Isn't this what you were saying what was going to happen to me? And so she's speaking as if mommy is condescending her. She's speaking as if mommy is like, I mean, mommy obviously isn't saying this or even looking like this right now. I mean, look at how mommy is looking. I would never. And she's starting to cry. But because she's thinking about this isn't, this isn't it at all. I wish, I wish I could have wished for my family's sake. I wish I could have done this. I wish I could still have them right now. But Kyoko's like, you think that what you wished for, even though it didn't lead you to happiness, I could have wished for the same thing and it would have led me to happiness. I would have made a dumb wish. I was being dumb. I was being naive. That's what you're thinking, right? Well, now you're thinking, now it's too late. Now you got to fight on. Now you got to be with me anyway. Because, well, now we're in the same boat. And Kyoko is really getting flustered about this. When it's not the case at all. So my last note for the car is, Mommy was saying she wished it were possible then for her to risk to survive that crash and save her family as well, but that her frantic and fading mindset made it impossible. She never told Kyoko she should have made a wish for herself. She, she never said that. Is it so strange to want to grant somebody else's wish? Asks Kyoko directly. Mommy says, no, not at all. I just thought that if such a wish could have fulfilled my own wishes at the same time, that would have been even better. That's all. She's not saying that you could have made a wish for yourself as well as your dad, and that would have been even better. She's saying that the wish I made could have been even better if I were able to have included my family in it, just like you chose to do from the start. That's all she's saying. She's saying it feels empty being a survivor because she's the only one there. Her, her family is dead. And so she wishes she could have brought them with her. She's not saying that you should not have brought your family because it would have been even better if you had yourself than if you had your family as the rich. That makes no sense. Because as things were, Kyoko was happy too. Her whole family was happy. Her whole family was benefiting from that rich. It's only because her dad was such a fuckhead that it ended up backfiring. But mommy didn't have that choice. That's what she was saying. And then she got cut off. In that case, it's just fine. And so Kyoko missed the point completely. It never gave mommy a chance to explain herself because nothing had gone wrong then and she's not that cold hearted. She would have never told Kyoko to have made a wish for herself when everything was going right when she wished for her dad's sake. And moreover, it was mommy's wish for herself that led to her family dying.